as you know, it's time for the Genshin RTS event. Pretty simple. Gonna be in Liyue and getting a bow that kind of works for Sethos, but isn't crucial. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here and okay, got our Samaru commissions. Big thing is, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to. Uh, uh, might be able to. I should be able to get one more roll on standard today, which, if I'm lucky, might mean getting something from soft pity. We'll see what happens. Just going to clean my expeditions. Thank you very much. And anything in? Nothing in there. Let's do those daily commissions real quick, and then start. The quest, the big thing is, I'm not sure what, uh, not sure what specific materials that the Bow Cloud Forge needs in order for ascension, and I guess we'll see. Hmm, alright. Let's check over here, and thank you. Cool. Nice. And we can... Grab on and oh, we were close enough. Scar can usually trivialize that a little bit, but there's only so much you can do. And over here is okay, more mushroom challenge. Simple enough. And party right now. Oh, we do have Sethos. So I could use the bow for that one instead. Instead of, or I could be really funny and use Clorind. That could be fun too. <laughs> Depends on their ability to actually reliably hit, and... Okay, simple smear roses around here. I thought for a second one of those might be a Viparias, but it is not the case. No, alright. Cool. Let me go over here, and... Oh well. Thanks. Thanks. And... Oh my... Oh, okay. What? Oh, there's no targeting on that at all? Interesting. Okay. Alright then. Just see. Turn on player visibility. And where are all the players? We got some in. The players in. The fortress. In Umedusa Harbor. And oh, the Rusty Rudder. Okay. Interesting. So in that case. Hmm. Where should I go? I'll do that next time. Now we just gotta get my commissions done real quick. This one is going to be increasing danger, and then we go to Leeway. So the big question is... Hmm. Go to the quest, cooperative war game to improve their tactics. Tianhun, Leeway Harbor. And over in... Oh, it's by the house from the Shenha. Or conquest. Alright then. Go over this way, take some fuel down. Hello, hello. Cause I could use Corin for this, but she probably would not really be able to hit. And he's up top and okay, he does have scoured right now, which is good. Hello there, hello. Thanks. And Whoa. Then we can hit nobody. Cool. Then. Mm, there they are. There are the reinforcements. And take you out, take you out, and there we go. Should be all. Okay. And the second tower is. Oh, we already got the second tower. Okay. So, in that case, let me see something. What am I going to. No, that's fine, that's fine. And then, and then... Right. Again, I do like that the Temple of Silence stays enterable and visible, even after the quest line, even if there's no real purpose to it. To be fair, it feels as if an eventual Sethos hangout event would probably take place at least slightly inside that area. It would only make sense. Okay, fortune and luck made a killing in the futures, and go to the tavern. It's a teleportation, and cool. Hello. And then, wait, wait. 
Is... Is he up top, or... Where did he go? So for in Wombod... Where is... Okay, right here. Cool. Hello. And then... Whatever you'd like to eat. Really did make a lot of Mora. Near Ripple. Which obtained... Futures. Personal experience. Yeah. Anything. Ask about money. Not in this. Gambler. Okay, truly a value. Slime futures. On profit. Stuff on the market. Just slime if it's traded. Slimes go extinct, right? Slime farmers. Price could go up. Just killing slimes ourselves. No questions. Golden dish. Keep the wealth. It's own original idea, or... No, no, right? It was mentioned in Wee Way. To him. Trading market and peace of mind. Help more often in the future. Special dish. Okay, cool. Hmm. Alright then. Gold devouring and Mora gathering. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Well, for now we got 15, and yeah, we should be able to get to 20 today. Shouldn't be any problem at all. Alright, we'll quit. Go to Leeway. Alright then, just collect all these. Thank you, thank you. Then we have Inuiwe Harbor. Just that over there. The question is... Hmm. Will I be able to get materials required for today? We'll have to wait until some other time. I could do it. If it's not today, then it'd be tomorrow or Friday or Sunday. Sunday for sure. Favonius, Gardenage, Shogun Samurai, and the Core of Thirty. So all five nations are here. Hmm. Wonder what kind of mutual security. It's the last patch in the Rhythm Game event. Right, and, and yeah, I mentioned some kind of war. Su Ding, Chiseled Face, Classical Sculpture, and Rival Aura. Commander. Proceeds you sending a letter extending invitations. If you've seen it, join what meeting? Professional warrior. More than that, displays of countless monsters and formidable foes across five nations. Displays recorded and analyzed by the armed forces of each nation. Hmm. Knights, Milf, Samurai. Court of 30, the Aramites, the Maison, Gardenage. So each nation has their own combat abilities and stratagems. Looking for the front command from the rear act of cooperation with the war game of five armies. Senior consultant with this proposal. Hmm. I feel like we might be able to get some info on why Nalan isn't involved since Naya makes sense, but. Like considerable for senior consultants, total daily composition, compensation for the event, but with sergeant, it's like a paid in prima gems. Tempting, deal is, don't know anything about it. Till the introduction, monsters roam, cannot be eradicated in a short time frame, monster threat, compiling monster intel, analyzing their threat, share knowledge. Top game pieces, there's no voice acting for this one. Hostile confrontations, analyze combat ability capabilities to the best of our ability. Hmm. This iteration. There's combat members. Different mindsets and perspectives. Control game pieces. Optimal method to suppress the threat. Hmm. Not in an army and a tactical genius, quote unquote. Good analytical angle, increasing scope and efficiency. Hmm. She gets it, mean to discuss, most convenient, safest way to deal with monsters. Percent experience for dealing with dangerous enemies, lots of chess like board games. Point games like this, pile of mora. Think of birds with one stone. Take things more seriously. Hmm. Same mentality as normally confronting monsters, reputation for being unflappable. It's ready to begin at any time, witness. Unique strategic prowess as one such as yourself. Oh, interesting. And you're right on the board. Hmm. Assault and defense scenarios. 
Okay, I want to see what these guys have to say. Oh, you're the one from the event last year, the Klee event. Funny Klee. What patch was that? The Kaboombo one? I think that was 5.2. I mean, 4.1. Not a view. Seen it before from the Klee stuff. Invasive Anglerfish. Chemical Detection, Reconnaissance Company, and Outriders. Slightly more important cog and machine, chosen to participate. Take on a commission until we'll gather will be useful to you. Oh, so you're the one from... Uh, in the previous RTS Fungi event. See each other soon, I believe. Talk to you and... Right, after old cog, don't have to remember everyone, just position and duties to give orders. Signals officer, a chemical instruments by Albedo from our reconnaissance tech. Updated their tactics and staffing structure. Signed to the reorganized 7th company. Hmm. -hmm. Expeditionary force, so that might be setting up Varka coming back, maybe. 7th company, combined arms, single unit with a range of capabilities, balancing range and melee firepower, reconnaissance and range and... Mondstadt. I wonder if Fontaine would give them guns. Frederica Gun. Oh, okay. Company's captain. Time comes. So they're mentioning Jean's mom. That's interesting. I wonder if she'd ever, ever be playable. Sif Varka and Jean's mom are both there. Where the many knights have been alive. Yep. Familiar. Jean's last name. That's her mom. Suited for leadership. Her mother, famous throughout. Active duty. Never tiring or slowing. Being a hero. Derek is never far. Well, they're bringing her up again. Admiration for her. Talent to be another cog. Heroic protagonist taking 100 foes alone. Another story. Mother might become a captain. Speculation. Formidable unit. A suitable candidate. Combined arms. So maybe she could be a Mondstadt character with a gun. Surpassed an ordinary caption. Does not like doing paperwork. Just likes fighting. Principal. About the ability experience equally. So maybe Jean to give commands to her own mother. Seema Synergy. That's interesting. So, can't imagine that would actually say anything about how she might be gameplay-wise, but I think the only thing that could really make a character work even better with Jean would be self-HP drain to take advantage even harder of something like a Fury and a buff at Jean's healing. Where game is going. So the most, Nathan has a different approach. All is a focus on the size of forces and training. No less are formation of Focus. Steel flank juggernaut, roll over a camp and crush everything. Offense and defense combined, perennial suited, splitting up, more wee way, glazing. Small formations so that they stay flexible. Opponent studies tactics and formations. They don't have a lot of weaknesses to exploit. Awareness and discipline, maybe only the Millith can do that. They are really, really glazing wee way. Go any harder, talk more next time, and. Su Ding, Mr. Liyue, general staff member. I don't think we've seen him before. Because Tyrena and Fonia have been from previous events, but these guys are entirely new. Tyrena the war game, valuable intel, uses a reference for enhancing security. More info we have, the better. Tactical acumen, or run wild. A few more rounds, board reset, start over whenever you like. And then, this war game, Kayong. I was holding it to Ningguang. Kayong. Would that be another Millith guy? It is interesting that we've never actually gotten a true Millith playable character. Control a conference of limited scope, sufficient to assess veracity of using simulations for intelligence. And real world militaries do use war games, as in games like, board games like these sometimes for strategic exercises, and arguably that is the ultimate genesis of D&D, because D&D began as a sort of combat simulation war game called Chainmail, I believe, and the role-playing aspect was only added later on due to sort of popular demand in the small gaming group it originated from. Hello there, hi Kozu, how are you doing? How does it feel for everything to be over? Services of neighboring nations, deep in cooperation, variables, expand intel that intelligence exercise could provide. That is right, Liyue does have direct connections more or less to Samaru. Fontaine, Mondstadt, and Inazuma. What's going on? And the intel? Well, hopefully I can fix that for you. 
Should caravans attacked on the road? Beneficial for... Oh, so you're basically just sitting around for a couple more days until you can actually do stuff more. Ending on a Friday, okay. Caravan is attacked. Beneficial for expanding this. Oh, because they're doing texts or were their phones confiscated? Oh, uh, well, fair enough. Well, I'm sure that there are always things to do if you look for them. At the very least, you can watch. Oh, right, right. Well, I mean, they were ending on Friday. Because you were just doing grad practice and getting ready for that. I graduated earlier when I was a high school senior. That was always interesting to me. They also would use, they also let you, if you had an A in a class, you didn't have to. As in you're lonely, or it sounds dangerous? Sorry about that. Relations, oh yeah. Appropriate level means it disposes of protecting the homeland, unique capabilities. No game piece is modeled after our own to be used. Simulation assess schools of thought rather than share capabilities. Mutual trust, common ground, betterment of all goals of cooperation. Mm, about the war game and... Mm, if necessary, I suppose you could, I don't know, send someone else or... I don't know. Caravans, limited, right, exactly. Not sure all the secrets. Graphic tees or what about them? About yourself, cross four, pay me much heed, frontline soldier. Is on Boiste, so I don't think we saw his name, but then he would have been in the Shenha Archon quest with the yeah, Abashed. I. <clears throat> it might be what I ate, or maybe. Maybe I need to drink some water. Early morning can sometimes be a bit different. Mm. Shenha rings a bell. So what if we bring up Shenha? Yeah, I'm a little raspy for better or worse. It won't kill anyone. Yeah. Rings a bell. Honored with an eidetic memory. Matchless commander. That level. Martial skills are weapons of a single individual. Can't discount the importance. Or... You can also prepare... No, you can't be prepared for anything. It was just simple formations. Adapt to the time. Upgrade arsenal and tactics. Advanced weaponry and tactics. Proper tactics for the adversary you're facing. Key to prevailing. Where are these keys? Even base can be dealt with. <clears throat> so let's ask again and... Ross before, what if we ask about Shenhut drawing a blank, that experience is peripheral, difficult to, just repeating what was said before. If you have the ability to go and find it interesting, sure. In the end, you can't do everything in life, but if you leave things on the table, you'll find yourself burdened by regret. If you're interested and you have the means to go, you may as well try it. Even if you don't like it, it, we still know for sure. Instead of, again, being burdened by constant what-could-have-beens. Well, you'll never know until you ask, and if possible, maybe you could get someone to go with you. Veneration. Ordinary soldiers are beyond that. Can't just own their martial skills. And, interesting, other armies taking part, depending on them, be frank. Top-notch professionals of the highest caliber. I... Not yet. That's Vivonius, Intelligence Officer, Cutting Edge Altemical Technology, Remote Reconnaissance, because I'm not sure I would have the resources. Also, I, I think the evil aura of Las Vegas would cause a spiritual and mental attack on my very soul. Intelligence Officer, Alchemical Technology for Reconnaissance, Projectile Weapons, Purchase Logistic Units for Associate Material, Considerable Budget. Sign your forehead. Interesting. With pen, I presume, or it sounds dangerous, maybe. Short commission, outstanding swordsmanship, leads from the front, drive is commandable. <clears throat> to focus on personal leading, difficult to properly command. Localize victory. Fair enough. If you want to be more erratic, I'm sure that that would be very possible. If it's a goal you set for yourself. Fair enough, you're gonna need more beef ramen, I presume. Properly command, look wise victory in a catastrophic defeat. Don't get carried away. Yeah, it's probably good for you to get up and stretch your legs a little at least. Take care of yourself. Don't die. Core of 30. Oh, so you have leftovers. Panda Express or extreme environments are experienced in. Claim for extended period of time with a small quantity of supplies. Increase their ability to adapt. Relatively lightly armed. Oh, nice. Oh, she from college or is she the same age as you? 
Lightly armed force, heavily armored foes directly, find themselves at a disadvantage. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Oh, you have a little sister. That's cool. Take care of her. Mm -hmm. It's nice that you drive her around. Sells at a disadvantage. Exceptional firearms unit, right to run out from that one mushroom event. Highly organized with strict discipline. Unleash withering volleys. Youngest cousin, but oldest... Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't have a lot of cousins, but I am on the younger side for them. At least the ones who are around. Complicated to use, of most importance, must all be trained to high standards, so they can't really be a big army. This thing is perfect combat units, make up for their weaknesses, improve performance in actual situations, Co communication cooperation will benefit us all. Okay, talk more later. Participation in the war games, a lot of this is... Besides Phonia mentioning Jean's mom, well, this dog seems to be a bit of a nothing but Wait, 40s? Oh wow, that's a, that's a big family. Almost sounds Irish-American. Yashiro, suiting senpai, quietly and warm commissioner, Kuramaro, servant of Yashiro, heard Aito and Ayaka speak of you. Courage, righteousness, etiquette, integrity, elegance, kindness, wisdom. One of those is at least a Inazuma talent book. Role model for all to emulate what they said about me. Humility as well. Virtue worthy of study. Oh, well, okay, so it's, so that might be part of why. It's not exactly blood related, is that why? to meet you sooner. Well, in the end, I'm sure that <sighs> awkward is what you make of it. Can... You can have a surprising lot of amount of control over your own mindset if you think it through. Oh, and is that a bad thing for you, or are you fine with that? Great significance. I wish we could actually get this sword as a weapon. They really should have introduced some more three-star Inazuma weapons, even if they wouldn't have been particularly useful. Okay, okay. Well, fair enough. Yeah. In the end, there, there's only so much time in the day to think about so many things. Kujo, oh, so Sara. Sara mentioned Commissioner thoroughly selecting myself as the representative. Fair enough, just please take care of yourself. Soon to clear the mountain, bandits in the mountains, few setbacks, considered martial skills decently enough, thank you. Martial skills to be superb. Monsters and bandits. West Warriors Spirit Sword Fighting Exhibition, edged out by Hirotatsu, so that's why we fought him. So that was mentioning in the last Perry Quasi Sekiro event with the Aika outfit. Special competition, understand the meaning of humility. Not reach the apex, it's still lead soldiers into battle and eradicate monsters, gifted with the opportunity. Kim to Wiiwi, always somewhere out there, better than my fighting ability. Not just a spear master, but a tactical master. Masters everywhere, convenient juncture, reckon if you places, expanding one's knowledge of discipline's gratitude beyond words. Question would be, there was that one little extra fight against actual mill of enemies over in Yuang Wharf in Chenyu. It was one of the few opportunities to actually fight human mill of enemies in a long time. Humility summons the same dialogue tree. And then we have let me see. Travel and see the world and learn, and that is, again, the same exact dialogue tree. And then, what have you learned so far? We found understanding, balance between bravery and strategy. It is, yes, prudence is the better part of courage. Many islands, two sets clash. Soldiers engage in duels. That's different than a sort of unit or skirmish-based tactic. Well, the only thing they would really be mentioning would probably be the Civil War. Morale is of the utmost importance, troop morale. A leader must lead from the front and charge. Come a convention. Follow those practices. Powerful monsters could spiral out of control. Engage a Thunderhelm Lava Troll, because those are right. I think those are the only Lava Trolls in Inazuma. Never saw any Frost Armor Stonewall that was exploring there. If I bite the skin of my teeth, would plummet, plummeting morale, and even panic. Balance bravery and strategy. Difficult for continuous line of battle. Cooperation must be emphasized. Divide and conquer. Right moment for orders, deciding as the leader when to advance and retreat. Countless methods, do not mind. Just closely when you participate in the war games. Maybe next time, understand, very busy. Respectfully waiting for you here, so still. Okay, I wonder what Sido and Tirana might say. The job of Mahamatra, Susano, and Dia. Core of 30, delegation greetings to you, you know me, just virtual event. And, okay, mentioning the first fungus event. And Tirana mentions the third fungus event. The second one was not really story associated. Crafty criminal and a scholarly accomplice and 
This guy got killed by the Tore, I believe. Wisdom and bravery. Tell your deeds considers you the best of the best. Never cease in your efforts. The amount of criminals you've dealt with staggering. Two scoundrels is barely register. More or less. Just look ahead. DS has the same. Yeah, look ahead to not worrying about her bad kit. Many of her brothers and men of her number followed her in. Patients for paperwork and rules. She'd have come here as the representative, but then they would need actual voice lines for this quest, and I guess they didn't want to spend. Sparring, learning new skills, and even eating new food. Everything is new and refreshing. Bring her new food next time. So regs are feast some meat and chew the fat. Which just means while well, chatting. No me and let's see. No need to bring up the past. Yeah, and that's the same dialogue tree and the chance, another yeah, just the same exact dialogue tree. Court 30 warned from the war game, touched on a critical issue. Gap in the degree of organization. Aramites are a lot more casual, one branch. Defend the cities, management of manpower trading supplies is yes, relaxed. And the middle of a huge factory in Blackcliff, which... Okay, so that might mean, might imply, the eventual addition of Blackcliff to the game, which is kind of inevitable, given that it is... It's the very south part of what's accessible in Leeway, bordering on that quasi Samara, quasi Leeway area in the southeast that you know nothing about yet, even though it's been barely out of Brown's terrain for oh about four years now. Collecting weapons and other equipment, mercenaries align individual blacksmiths like oh not Han Fang. It was a Hangar, a Hangar. Do you all buy a good weapon? Oh, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm just. Chilling out, things are ending early. My mom has got to get some blood drawn for a medical test, so that's why things will end a little bit early, but I'm still down to do this event. How are you doing? Fully finished products from the factories. Pretty straightforward for payment. No dedicated department. That's good to hear. Materials, anything particularly interesting going on in your neck of the woods? Our materials, production, processing, not likely. Okay, the department, and... Yeah, she's alright, it's just, she got a gallbladder removal a few months ago due to gallstones, and I'm pretty sure that this is a follow-up to see how she's doing. I'm not sure specifically why it's blood, but I suppose maybe there might be, I don't know, enzymatic leak leakage or something that they might have to make sure isn't happening. It's just a normal follow-up to make sure everything's chip shape. I think. Processing, malt, standardized training, mercs are casual, trying to make a living, no strict assessment standards, all levels of skill, tactical considerations, and other things as well. Be on our way, talking in when you've got time. Well, either way, thank you for your concern. Proto boss, trip down here worth it, become a proto boss, Chevros and Gross Richard. Gross Richard? Oh, I think Gross Richard was the Malocene from the previous Fungus event. This acknowledgement of the special patrol and the guards. Thank you very much, I do appreciate that proto-boss. Boss level, cream of the crop for commanding. So basically, this is fighting skills, this is fighting and commanding. Staff officer invited you to join Prove It. Interesting simulation, greatest fighters, how they dealt with monsters, stuff you showed me before, super busy bee. Not be able to remember right away. I guess my one question for you might be, out of all the Genshin events you've played so far, which was your favorite? I think I've probably said before that I liked Iridori and the Warrior Spirit ones. Because they were combat and, you know, pure skill focus in an interesting kind of way. Task Fiesta, Gift of Insight, yet yeah, that one event, and... Fun oh, right, she also showed up in the movie event for the... That's why I thought she was in the sniping event, because she also was. Genuine revelation. Not too many missions, got the invitation sent me as a representative. Sending sharpshooter capable of helping. Spent helping, wasn't wasted. Credit to, too kind, can't thank you enough. Joining on more simulations, many monsters are different. Playing in a series of magnificent tactical plays, which might imply a bit of sort of theatrical. Second Dragon Spine? Yeah, that was the first Dragon Spine one I did, because I started, I think I told you, but I started playing when Yola first, first came out. So I missed the first Dragon Spine event entirely, which means I don't have Festering Desire, which really sucks, because it is Firina's best four star weapon, which is very, very silly. Yeah, it. Right before that summer, it was a very. Convenient time to start. I do think that they might have kind of shot themselves in the foot by basically launching the game and therefore every falling. Oh, every falling region basically at the start of fall when people were starting school. Because it, oh, it definitely conflicts a little with a lot of people. Not for me anymore, but still. 
definitely a little, a little a bit of an issue, probably. Yeah, yeah, the fake Albedo. What is your verdict on what happened to fake Albedo and that one kid's dad? Because I, I think, and I think it was pretty much implied that Albedo turned Susbedo or Imposter Albedo or Primordial Albedo into the kid's dad to give him another chance, another chance at life. But what are your thoughts? Work hard, understood. I'll do my best. Joining in. Okay. Then special patrol and simulation. Not the first time working. Medusa and Yolong are across the sea. Jit one sent in working relationship. Guarantee the safety of shipping. Shpros was stoked. Tactics in tech. Oh, hi. How are you doing? So is the Wi-Fi working again? For example, we think met with formations with layered ranks. Ranked volley fire. Rhythm of volleys. And equipment studying muskets. Criminals smuggling firearms or similar ruin machines. But why don't they use guns themselves? Well, because at the very end of the event... Okay, hopefully. At the end of the event, Albedo talks about basically being a gardener and sort of playing with life. And it's implied that he went to confront Primordial Albedo, but nothing is really said directly about what happened. And I think the implication of the metaphor he used is basically, you know, I would prefer to give Primordial Albedo another chance at life. And give a kid a father rather than kill him for no real reason. Samela Smith researching armor blocks of ceramic between two pieces of fabric. So basically, this would be a bulletproof vest. Strike, disintegrate, outermost layer, structural integrity, reducing penetrative power. So onward, ceramic will break, absorbing the impact, stuffed by the final layer of armor. Spawn of caliber, light enough ammo, might not get through, yeah, a bulletproof vest. If you want to set two, ask your with friends. Costs a lot. For the manufacturer, too heavy for ordinary people. Armor heavier than a guard mech. Weapons comparable to artillery. Probably not too heavy for them. Musketeers couldn't hit something as skilled as you. Don't need the protection. Yeah, we just dodge. So then, keep it up. Gotta get going. Don't be strange. We'll see each other soon. And so the dialogue really just implied... Maybe if the future edition of Blackwood Forge, the return of the Expedition Force with Varka and Jean's mom, actually, which I did not know. When you build, joint wargaming exercise, still in trial phase, limit the budget, restricting the meeting scale, not more wasted. Right, for the iteration's requirements, enough space for each delegation. Let's check. Yeah, yeah, Jean's mom being a character would be interesting, because they did mention something like synergy... If they fought together in that dialogue, which implies maybe, maybe, though Lenny and Lynette are not exactly meant to be synergetic, though a lot of that is prompt because Lynette is a free character too, and couldn't be too specific, but analysis progress and for Quad Forge, new component, dynamic load wouldn't lose to Xion mechanisms on the prototype weapon, power considerably increased, ruled by humanity, top bowstring of a bow can only survive with tension. That's fair. I guess it might also imply that their dad, Seamus Pegg, could be added to eventually. That would also be more Mondstadt church stuff as well, which could be interesting for lore, I suppose. We have Barbara and we have Rosaria. To be fair, the fact that we don't have an actual mill with playable character is interesting to me. Which is forge, standard issue weapon from Blackcliff. Ancient mechanisms that protected the abode upon Tianhung. Oh, so this is basically a handheld version, arguably, of the Guizhong Ballista. Oh, that's fun. Assault and defense scenarios, power algorithm. So we have to do this as fast as possible. And analysis progress, initiating war games, collecting combat data, useful points of reference for commanders, and all his abilities and how to defeat them. Get one soon is in a Milith character? Well... I guess the next time would probably be next January, where they always put out at least one leeway character for Lantern, right? Staging area, combat units, jump to cancel the selection, automatically engage the enemy. Yeah. But at the very same time, I think they would probably focus on maybe more... <sighs> seven stars, cheesing than any Milleth characters. Punished over time and leadership skills, usages at once... Hold to aim, aiming sprint or jump to cancel. Press AoE over squad. 
Melee suppresses range, ranged flying, flying on melee. Interesting. What is this Fire Emblem Weapon Triangle? Okay, but it says AoE over squad, but what is the purple? Single target range, maybe? Or that's not range, that's something else. More resilient, more damage and protect. Interesting. Power algorithm must have a weakness. Weakness is striking them. Effective use of one's own power. My lineup and okay, they're all squad, so AoE would be ideal. And oh, they already say more stuff like this. So all of them are squad and some are flying, but they only show one icon on there. Oh, and they have descriptions for everything. Created by sedimation, sedimentation of pyro, common dangerous for adventurers and security. Given on training, single slime is not a threat, and groups are more dangerous. Standard unit for elemental warfare, effective tactics for which creatures cannot target flying. <clears throat> oh, interesting. So in that case, the best way to deal with them might be... Well, actually, all of these are ideal. Cannot target flying, but... Okay, so the Pyro Potioneer... The only flying unit here is going to be the Seasons. Big thing is that if all of these guys are groups, I really don't need anything other than AoE. Don't need a real balance. And the Potioneers can presumably take the Seasons out. Yeah, because... Well, these guys could also take down the Seasons, but I don't know. I feel like just using... Here we counters everything. And they would still have enough capabilities to take down some of the others. The only thing that would be really silly to engage with would, of course, be the Electro Seasons, which probably wouldn't be much trouble. Same description, Electro Fighter, Primitive Wandering Inhabitants. Simple belief in the power of physical prowess. No more than the Mighty Trolls, similar to ordinary soldiers, cooperate well with companions for team fighting tactics. Funny that they mentioned team fight tactics because that tactics is literally. Yeah, that's the League of Legends auto chess one. Very funny that they mentioned that. Electro Seasons, manipulate Electro a little, not very strong, but can do considerable power, probably because of reactions. Compact dimensions, flying under treetops, difficult to detect them, early warning difficult. Raids, already on there before discovered, too late to organize defense. Enemy is good for training against small agile targets. Carved electro crystals and simple crossbows, electric shock on impact. Okay, so they made the arrowheads from electro crystal. I don't know if they mentioned that in the archive. Comrades, better suited to close quarters combat, basic elements of combined arms, range fire and melee attacks. Concentrating on key targets, standard range, depth research, easily applicable results. It just says unmelting ice. Unmelting ice. Pokemon never melt ice. Flying and ground unit, pyro attacks, predictable stronghold, firing platforms. And this is okay, and that's exact. So squad, AO So single unit AoE, single unit, single target, and then squad. Okay, leadership skill. So that's the only one we can use. Sweeping Whirlwind. Dealing Animo Damage. Two initial uses. Oh, but using that on slimes would allow taking a lot of them out via swirls. Synthesized Intel. So all of these. And wait. Oh. Oh, wow. There are boss enemies in this one. Eventually we're going to have to fight the, fight the seahorse. Well, that's crazy. Stronghold mechanism and support beacons, deploy new units. So basically, we can't just send things down, we have to actually run around. Order from the commander, connect the intelligence, giving units to targets and objectives. Home base, cannot attack, objective protect, monolith, camp headquarters or base, support valuable installation. The head of the snake to achieve victory, attack weak points, set to tighter defenses, can hold on until victory. Oh, we actually need to add everything. Well... We're just going to use all the AoE units. Okay. Hmm. Let's destroy the opposing base. Oh, okay. So we can't... Mechanism destroyed. Reset as the opposing side. Near your own mechanisms. It's to deploy. Come on. One, two, one... Oh, interesting, but... Oh, we have to... Oh, okay. Let's keep going like this. 
So... We can't actually select things, we just have to send them out as soon as possible. That... that's okay, I guess. Well, alright. And then, can we... Oh, it's not rebuilt yet, so we'll be able to do more shortly. And here's our base now. It won't show us the outline if we don't have anything to collect quite like yet. Okay, so the closer the better, presumably. They'll automatically arrange themselves in a fine enough way. And where is the monolith to destroy? That's the real question. Cool. Big thing is, there isn't much of a point in swirling right now. So I would want to wait until we have slimes to use. Oh, goodness. Okay. Hmm. Maybe I should have been using that skill. Yeah, okay, cool. And, yeah, that was actually very, very useful. And so go ahead, take that down. Thank you very much. So I should be using that skill pretty much as much as possible. And, is that it? Okay. So all we had to do was destroy the final mechanism. Alright, then. And then... Even if you have an overwhelming advantage, attack the flanks as much as possible, as opposed to frontal assaults, that's our condition. Swift victory in reducing losses. Question is... Where we actually get Cloudforge? Oh, presumably from the point rewards. Clear the lineup and... Hmm. Well, in the end, until we actually have multiple things to select, there's no point in really make, really choosing between excellent staying power, taking down the concentrate power, mess of electro damage to a single unit, samurai fall into banditry, Kamina art, Kamina Haranosuke, from the Inazuma lore and the one Onryo chamber event, the Labyrinth Warriors event. Yeah, the Shiki Taisho little guy we had, the little pet. Retrieving talismans, robust physique, individually powerful. Tip of the spear and assaults, breaking through with even newly distributed forces. Seeing their tendencies, useful resisting units, capable of rapidly penetrating defensive lines. Setting up agile and defense systems for concentrating forces, defending against dangerous foes before they can get through at the rear and cause a breakthrough. So, concentrating on specific foes, but we don't have a way to choose specific enemies. Well, we could also just have flying enemies get them powered with pyro, so nothing all that different. But for being deployed, crowd projectiles, enemy units from the air, immune to crowd damage. So all of these guys are single target, interesting. Which means that group would swarm them down. Foot in the air, highly concentrated elements, compact and resilient touchstone for anti-aero defense capabilities. Ordinary bows don't work very well, mobility bullets and cannons is limited. Mobile firing platform with significant firepower to deal with them. So I suppose, firearms of some sort? Kikoban? Yai Tachi. So not a katana, but a tachi, so... For the katana, you know, they just have tachi, so presumably a bit more curved. Haven't really looked at their swords all that much. Much more, Many more combat styles than bandits or treasure hoarders, advanced sword skills and crossbows. Very and difficult to predict. Worthy of detailed study, unit, choosing thinking capabilities. So avoid stopping losses across swords with such foes in the future. Wizens, mumbling hillitural. Cannot, cannot attack flying, can only attack ground. Surface to surface. Interesting. Power of Hydro, summoning water and rain, pivotal roll. Some the effects can yield advantages. Starting point, research water baked tactics. Not just cost saving, but steady incremental pros progress. Progress. So, what do we have this time? Big thing is that if all of them are single target, we should spam everything we can use with AoE. I mean, group. Group enemies. Team is good, team is good, and then I guess the question is... What would be best? Okay, so actually, well, they were recommended at the very same time. The Krog guys would be interesting, but probably a bad idea, because some of the enemies are immune. Which raises the question of why the Pyrus Lent is still recommended, but we'll be fine. It's all we really need to do, and... What skill do we want to use? Roll in, blazing, breakthrough, and... Huh. Maybe, well, okay. None of these guys have any inherent applied elements. So it probably would be better to deal with this one. Okay. Just spam it as soon as possible to break everything down. Stronghold flag, deployable units 25% faster. Control the flag, deploy units nearby. Well, alright. Cool. 
cool. Just send everything out and do a unit, and right, that's just the stronghold flag, frontline zone of control, and the zone for deploying. Very few OE units can penetrate through to the rear. Participate in battle must begin engaging for their own zone of control. Well, all right then. You unit and fire guys here. Oh, but there weren't a lot of enemies, so. All right then. Oh, but uh, didn't attack all that much. And can we wait over here, presumably? Maybe so. Need to get this real quick. Yeah, yeah. One, one, one. Okay, cool. So waiting advantage advantages, gain the advantage as quickly as possible and rush them all down seems to have been a pretty good idea. Alright then, but uh, they're not swarming the enemy. And quite frankly, I don't have a very good idea to... Well, the overloads were working well. I don't have a great way to get them to focus on a single enemy, do I? Because it's all just completely automatic. But they are triggering reactions on that. Now this is... Fun, but so far it's exceptionally simple. I hope the seahorse one is at least a bit more challenging. Saturation fire, other suppressive attacks, it will challenge to overcome for any type of operation. Disperse appropriately when deploying. Avoid catastrophic losses while in contact. And oh, so in theory, presumably, we would have to. And now they actually have different kinds of units, but this is siege. Won't attack enemy combat units. Explosive firepower, default hypothetical enemy, store them medium and long range, and that's power to utterly overwhelm normal people, because combat is a bad idea, more destructive towards buildings and small agile units, terrifyingly strong battering ram. Not attack any others, so... It's a siege and melee. Presumably flying would be best against them. And we also have Hydromimic Finch. But it just looks like a bubble right now. Deploy freely. Oh, directly to enemy ranks. Hydro damage. Concentrate the life force of oceanids. Small number of elites have seen such beings before. Hydro elemental body structure. Area effect attacks worthy of study. Any force can resist them. Can defend off other creatures with devastating offensive capabilities and maintain the integrity of their defensive line. So most of these guys are... Almost all of them are... Melee... Flying, but oh, but flying, melee, ranged, flying could be good, but by advantage, I wonder if it's actually a damage modifier or simply a theoretical thing. Modicules, large two-handed axes, destructive energy, pressure, defensive line made up of ordinary humans, widely distributed, numbers nothing to sneeze at, main safe frontline unit among monsters. Research and understanding their characteristics, generalized tactics for similar monsters may be formulated. That's similar. This can't target flying. Oh, that's... Oh, because it's on the ground. Ground void. Hard exoskeleton. Another one that can be deployed freely. Oh, that's crazy. Why is not, not to underestimate in battle? Way of moving. Surprise attacks. Cover distance quickly. Protection against ordinary weapons. An important part of their efficacy. Combat capabilities. Effective way to increase the ability of military force. Steel with fast-moving, heavily armored units. So what do we have now? Oh, we do have our own Nobushi. So let me check our intel on our own. So we don't have a lot of intel on our own characters, it's just simple descriptions. Impression and so. Kairagi, power in the katana, and use that on AoE enemies. So all of these are mostly good right now. There's a little bit of team stuff, but... Focusing on single target as much as possible would probably be good. Got flying and... So those were all recommended. That's the big thing. So besides the AoE, there's a little bit of team. There's one flying enemy, and that's... Hmm, two of ranged, and single target on... Flying, good on melee. Melee, good on range. Range, good on flying, but... AoE would be good. AoE and flying, which means some kind of AoE ranged, in theory. Take that guy out, because all these others are relatively good flying on. These are melee, and they also recommended the Kyrogi, just because they're very, very strong. So someone that can target, who we in range, which means the ideal would be single target and melee. Target melee. I'll target melee. Well, I've deployed all of our single target. Well, that's single target ranged, and... 
Maybe we can just try this. The issue is that the Hydro Sandwich won't do anything to the Finches. Uh -huh. Single target range, which means single target melee, but we already have that. Should focus on you down with some kind of flying. Flying unit, but that's siege instead of any of these. Some sort of flying unit. Maybe just using seasons, actually. Maybe. Seasons get some of you down. What would react well with this? Hydro is always good, better than Electro, especially since we don't have any Dendro options at the moment. And then to take down these guys specifically, team and flying, so AoE arranged. AoE arranged. Oh, and we can use these ourselves. AoE. Melee, AoE. Well, I could use those ourselves, actually. Maybe. Huh. I. Not quite sure. We don't really have any AoE ranged options at the moment to take out flying enemies. Something arranged would be good, but. I. Cannot target flying. That might be good, just to take out the seasons, most likely. Let's see what happens. It's just dealing with the seasons could quickly get very, very annoying. This could be good. What skill do we have? Momentous Wave. Recover health. Sure. So we'll use that as soon as things start taking damage. Oh, this is actually quite tiny, and the wall is not as relevant as I expected, but oh, we should. Okay, new unit and... Oh, we're gonna have to use some Hydro eventually. Well, that's life, I guess. It's hitting quite capably, too. So deploying freely is bad and dangerous for us. But we got that already, so... This should still be plenty fine. And healing and recovery. So we can just keep hitting, but oh, oh, those enemies are in a very annoying place for me. Thank you for taking that down, and the Ruin Guards pretty soon should be annoying too, though. And let's get a bit more healing down. And then from dying, and boundary of your faction base, I. So I think they took each other out. So we have this now, which is good for us. See how this works and see if we can get any reactions off. Maybe, maybe not. Well, either way, just choosing things with the right connections. And oh, those specters fly really, really high. Didn't even really notice. Well, this should be fine. This is simple enough. Frankly, I the defense is probably going to be a lot harder. Because when I did the fungus event, very first fungus event, which was a lot more like this than the other falling fungus events. The defense ones were a lot harder than the others. This river crossing is about the factors on immobility, force them into disadvantageous positions, consolidate a dominant position. Rivers are commonplace and can be exploited. Let's check it. Oh, we actually got the horse. Oh, that's crazy. Synthesized intel and... Mm, combat units. And so... What do we have now? We've seen these, and seen that, and Assault Melee Unit periodically charge AoE Melee. Same spawn performing spinning attacks. Nimble Harvester Numa. Excavate, Transport Sand and Soil, but none of the enemies can actually use Numa, so it's not as if we can actually do an Annihilation Reunit unit to stop it, only having Numa, Numa Usi Annihilation Energy. Both saw forward, striking along a straight line, destructive force. Text developed to deal with this kind of mecha, adapted to deal against catapults, rolling boulders. Rolling boulders? What is this? Catacombs of Carthus or Bright Zone Cold Seldor from Dark Souls? Boulders, other tough monsters, use of spinning movement, and. Interesting, but we didn't run into any of those last time. Sure, Kikobon, we've seen all of this already. Power Pushioneer, Volatile, Flammable Brews, aid in their dastardly deeds, unremarkable combat skills. Agent bottles, dangerous areas that burn, effectively pin down enemies. Bring about suppressive tactics and airy denials, classic example, and that's beneficial to all kinds of soldiers. Check out some of these then, and okay, that's normal. From the Call Sherbius. Usia homing missiles. Its so purposes, pre-prepared energy blocks move over short distances for short periods of time. Autonomous weapons of similar size to ordinary human soldiers. Functions and offensive capabilities have a certain balance, easier to deploy, move, and conceal. Single target arranged. Formidable firepower, robust armor, manifest significant offensive defensive capabilities, rated as a pillar of the battlefield. This is bubble. Oh, it's not. It's actually just a bubble or seahorse, not Millennial Pearl. Should have noticed because Millennial Pearl has a horn anyway. Hmm. 
Electro Fontaine Air Shell. Spring Attack dealing Hydro Damage. Okay. And then it uses Electro Lasers before that. A male bubbly seahorse. What is the adult form of the female one? Bubble, aggressive, electro, and hydro, and dangerous creatures with elemental defenses is difficult to face. High nice level of caution, with both electro and hydro available for research. Never had the chance to dive into underwater combat. Since the learned will aid them in containing foes, more will be found and yet more deadly. But they don't even use electro underwater. Underwater, enemies only really use hydro attacks, so they don't want to react with themselves. So in that case, we have good matchups, AoE, and let's see who counters who. Should try to get one specific counter for every type of enemy, beyond what's already recommended. This is Geo Bishop Hatchling. Spinning attacks, and let me see. AoE melee, and that works on single target on team range. Team melee, team range. I mean, AoE range, so. <sighs> Just make sure that. So, targeting a ranged single target would be melee team. Let's get a melee team unit. Do we. Let's just see. Reactions would be good to have, and particularly these would be good for the seahorses. That could actually combat multiple. So, AoE ranged. This team group... Oh, no, no, it's... Single target. AoE ranged versus... Single target... Single target melee. Be good on them, and so in that case, probably this. Work well, and that counters both of them, and takes out the shield, ideally. Counter you, single target ranged, and that means... Get in range, so team and melee. Team melee would, in that case, we can put in the pyro slimes, and then this should all be good. Single target range, and another single target range. AoE melee, meaning single target flying, but we don't have. Uh, but we already do have one of those guys in, and team melee, so AoE flying, but. Uh, we should still be fine. This should still be good. Metis wave and this should be good for dealing with the seahorse. Save that for the seahorses and just blow their shield up, ideally. See what happens. And we can... Oh, deploy pretty freely then. Interesting. The boundaries of the base. No, no, not all that freely. This should be good. Until we get some more of those, we should be fine. We're not really doing anything with this... Oh, not doing anything with the banner, so what, could we claim this if we... Mmm, this is taking more time than I might like. So we started over here, we could claim that banner to increase our forces. But, there we are, we've claimed that, which means more boundaries for our base. Claiming that as quickly as possible would be a good idea, but... So staying around, and oh, a new unit, just one of those guys, but... Break that down soon, or... Oh my goodness, this is bad. Thank you. The AoE should, yep, yeah, just totally destroy some of these guys. That's pleasant. So then in that case, oh, but right, they can be deployed freely. Yeah, I forgot about that part. So let's try to get, try to claim this banner, ideally. And are you going to stay over here, or what? Oh, and there we go, we got a seahorse, which means this blasts you down. And, oh, it instantly killed. Well, that's crazy, crazy. Okay, cool. Thank you, thank you. That's all, and this should be simple as always. Fun enough. Honestly, I definitely don't need to try as hard as I am, but it's fun to try to use synergies to make things work. That's the end of that. So, there should just be a couple more attack ones, and that's onto the defense versions. Select the stage, and... River crossings, but... Guess they were just referring to the banners, maybe. Maneuver, maneuver, more maneuver, advantage at speed, stay on the move, restrict the freedom of movement, preventing yourself from being trapped. So what's new? We have you. Desert clear water, young lady lost in the ancient dream of the desert. Thrill of bloody battle is her true reward. Nothing outside of work and the mission at hand. Long water with harsh enough forgiving sense, formidable in combat, even without using the broken ominous spirits of the jinn. Power and speed balance, the FXC of a Sunfrost, comparable to a squad, craft skills, battlefield control. 
This example, Agile Elite Deadly Light Unit using mobility to take advantage of weak points for sides or protect combat. Decisive role in deciding the outcome walks on a single enemy. With continuous and ferocious assault, make soldiers of any army consider the tactics carefully before facing such a foe. Floating animo fungi take flight, energy projectiles recharging, AoE damage. AoE flying, okay, that's new. Extreme adaptability, support organism of some intelligence, hot umbrella, excellent buoyancy. Float suspended in midair. Classic small to mid size, power of animo, effect targets within a certain area of effect. Trait worthy of study, moderate move. Oh, this is. I think this might be the animo fungus that Layla had. Hmm. Moderate speed makes it an easy target. Cuteness in appearance and habit makes it difficult to pull the trigger. Oh my goodness. Let's take these and see what they counter. This counters... It's Both of these are single target range, which means they counter... Single target and range. Counter... AoE flying. So both of them just really counter are the fungus. And, oh goodness, but we also have a siege unit. And you would counter team and flying, so single target melee. That's none of them. So, actually, we're kind of countering things pretty badly, but team and flying means we definitely need AoE flying. I mean, AoE. Wait. Team and flying, so AoE melee, but... I mean, AoE ranged. AoE ranged. AoE ranged is going to be... What? Oh, we can't use the fungus yet. It should be good, but also AoE ranged... So the bubble or seahorse would be good on these guys, for sure. And to counter the others would be... Hmm. The ones you've targeted so far the fungi and... So you're probably the hardest to deal with, so flying... Range... No, I mean... Single target melee, so flying and... Team, flying team. What's your question? Go ahead, go ahead. I have no problem with that. Let's use, actually, maybe some Hydro Seasons. And then, maybe we could use, depending on the reactions, we might want to use the Animo one. Who, Nathan never? I... I've never heard that name. What about him? Do you know? I know... Just a second. Second. Nathan for what's his name? I know Nathan Fielder. I know Nathan Fielder from Nathan for You. One of the classic cringe comedy series is everything. But I don't know Nathan Never. Not sure what you're talking about. So let's scroll that. There we are. And okay, this is quite good. I like this seahorse a lot. I like this seahorse a good deal. Oh, but they're hitting me. Okay. Commemorative medal. Then I... I don't know who that is then. That's interesting. And can we scroll that? And oh, but it didn't even get the... Didn't even get the electro. Oh, that's crazy. Is he an Italian guy or... I... I'm interested. What is... Huh. You know, I guess I could look him up, but... I am... Intensely confused. So more guys are over there. Let's just take this tower down. And all right. So they're not gonna attack anything. Anything all that special, but that tower over there can't be deployed to yet. And oh, the recharge time is sometimes a bit of an issue. And mm -hmm, the flying guys are taking him down quite easily by just chain freezing. Okay, thank you. I would've been fine googling, googling it myself, but I do appreciate that. And that should be it. There we go. Hmm. Commemorative medal of this guy. Must be a big shot. And then tactical reserves, unique enemies, kept in reserve to respond to emergencies, close eyes, limit the situation, using the right units for the right task, a very common strategy. This is all we've seen, everything new, and intel. So we've seen all these guys already. So, in that case, what are they going to recommend for this fight? Sun for us, and we'll see what gets taken. 
Elemental type, they are immune to against them. Elemental reactions as much as possible. And so in that case, see what a comic, an Italian comic, or here we on AOA. So AOE range that should work, but no, no. AOE means AOE flying, AOE flying. So that works. That said, <sighs> hmm, we'll look. So AoE Flying will work on both of those, and then AoE Melee, so... Flying... Single Target... Flying Single Target would be some kind of... Spectre, so actually... Let me think, okay, that would be... Non-effective against fewer things, and then... That works, and then... Target Flying, so then... Team and Range? Team Ranged? Let's see... Best team range would be team and range. Well, we got the assistance already, actually. So, in final guy, we would want single target, single target, melee, single target melee. So, one of these guys in a comic book. Well, so what? Wh what's it about? What's it about then? Billing wave. That that should be fine. Let's see how this works. Hmm. Mm -mm. Oh, that's big. A lot of enemies here. Take them down as quickly as possible. And... Okay, so that worked to trigger a couple of reactions. So actually, the best we do this... Huh. Interesting. What's the idea behind the plot? This might be some trouble. The Kairugi is weighing them down more than a little, and... Oh, he couldn't change his target. Oh, that's not good. Hmm, interesting. Either way, we can take this down pretty quickly and... Keep on deploying. A Shaolin... Why is his name Nathan? That's... Interesting. Okay. So, is he an American policeman, or a... An Italian policeman, or... Hmm. Refuge in. But it's sci-fi with martial arts. Is that what I'm hearing? That's interesting. Oh, we actually... F no, we can't freeze the tower. Freezing the tower does nothing. Okay. Hmm. Come on, come on. Okay, okay. When you say refuge... It made it sound like he was on the run from somebody or something. Oh, oh, interesting. Okay. Hmm. Oh, alright, and the reaction should be pretty useful, maybe, hopefully. Okay. Classic policeman one day from retirement. Okay, and grounded enemies are decent for this, but oh, they're actually, oh wow. Well, that took out a few of them, but still, this is harder than I expected. They're actually resurging. Okay, okay. Makes me wish I could actually... The elemental immunities are really, really troublesome now. Mm, I, they're gonna take that one, aren't they? Yeah, they actually... Wow! Oh, that's actually insane. Hmm. Maybe we should focus on flanking? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Blade Runner, okay. So, as in... Well, what's interesting is that... Blade Runner is... Based off of a story by a guy named Philip K. Dick, an American sci-fi author who, among other things, was constantly on a lot of substances. But the interesting thing about it is that the story it's based on is not called Blade Runner, even though he actually had one called Blade Runner. It's based off of a story called Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which is entirely different. My dad actually has the original book. And, oh my goodness, I... Ah, uh, that did not hit quite right. This is... tough. Maybe I should have gotten one of those that can hit multiple areas at once. 2024. Well... Frankly, it would... be more confusing if it actually was from 2024. Huh, I... okay. Interesting. This is really tough. Okay. I'm just getting really bad rolls. On what units actually show up. 
The fact that we got pushed all the way back is a really, really bad sign. Well, what kind of catastrophes were they talking about? That's the real question. Oh, maybe I should have done a single target kind of deal, but... Oh, because having both of these on my flank is really, really tough. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Interesting. Well, I can boom for a bit. Oh, but it didn't target anything at all? That makes no sense. I... Huh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out a different team setup. Big thing is, I needed the Anima one instead of the Hydra one. Because, I uh, okay, kept the lineup, but... Given that there are a lot of enemies with a lot of elements, using this... We'll probably make it work. Hmm. Yeah, he had to stop because of the horrors. Okay, and thank you, and... So that works really, really well to take down a lot of these guys, so... The animal one is always good. Whenever you have things, you can have multiple elemental interactions. One, well, yeah, you want to use the animal. Said we can... Oh, okay, and that should be useful, though. And, yeah, single one does it. The bomb's annoying, though. Okay. So once things show up that we can get multiple elements off on, we need to use multiple elements on it. That's the big thing. Whenever they send in slides. So otherwise, they'll swarm my guys really quickly and cause some trouble. So that's all we had to do. Just switch to a different tactical ability and it became went from really, really hard to outright trivial. It's kind of funny, actually. But it does say a lot about the importance of strategy. The big thing to me is just... I hope that the non-anima ones would be more useful, considering the anima one was unlocked first. Either way, we've got three stars on everything here, so let's try the others. An AA Umbrella, so an anti-air umbrella. Let's use the initiative, choosing where battle will be joined. Flying units shine, appropriate units for a defensive line for their approach, still a considerable distance away. Well, thank you very much. Oh, and this is more interesting, because there's actual... There are lanes that you have to focus on. It's not just about sending things through either way. The whirlwind will almost certainly be better. Well, maybe. Grouping is always good, but... So what is... Oh, we can't actually choose. This is all predetermined. Oh, okay. Hmm. So we have to figure out which one is better, but hopefully we can check. Hmm. Left for the first one is going to have to be Pyro Potioneers. And then center would be, well, everything else. These guys are ranged. Well, flying, flying, works on them. Mm -hmm. Maybe actually these guys too, because we might not be able to get both advantages, but we can at least get one. Mm -hmm. Team on you, we don't have any... So, Seasons on the center, and then, hmm. So, everything here on the center, and then Archers and Potioneers on the left. Okay, cool. Just gotta figure out where our advantage is best made use of. Support beacons and frontline buildings. So, this is more complicated. Okay. Then zones, lock on, and initiate combat. Hmm. Originally deployed to, to choose appropriately. So right, and then, let me just see. Oh, preparing. Let me check my... Check the details, or... Oh, we can't really check the details all that much. Or combat unit. Right, and it was the archers and the potioneers in the center. And, no, archers, potioneers on the left, everything else in the center, I think. Oh my goodness. Archers, potioneers in. Let's see. Archers, potioneers on the left, everything else in the center. Okay. One. One. Two. Oh, but nothing there yet. Interesting. We need more units soon. Inbound down the center, so nothing on the left yet. Okay. Interesting. Uh huh. See where I can actually do things base wise on the left. That, okay, support beacon, and you have to pick this up. Oh, wow. Well, we should put this here anyway. 
All right. And how many more beacons? How many more beacons are we going? Okay, the AoE is really, really good. Pyro slime. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Let's wait. And the AoE takes them down well. So, face the foe now, but we don't have any beacons to use. Left flank, center. Well, the AoE on these works quite well. I honestly need to pay take more attention to the fact that that's AoE, and, but it doesn't say range, so presumably it doesn't have a set advantage, but it, still, this is really good for flying units, so. Mm -mm. Either way, everything should be the same. Archers, potioners on the left if possible, and then everything else in the center. And bound down the center. Go ahead. Try me. So will... The lightning attacks trigger overloads, or... Season attacks. Well, they'll trigger overloads from just all that, and support beacon over that way, and hydro season. Okay, cool. Thanks, electro season. So we'll just take you down here. The seasons there were simple enough to fight, and this should be good too. Alright, and treasure border potioner, this side over here is good. Hmm. Alright then. Face the phone now, then. That's just the same as normal, and right. If it's seasons on the left, potioners and archers on the left, everything else in the center. So the reaction should be decent here. We don't have anything with a lot of AoE, though. Oh, that's the thing. Well, alright. I'm sure we'll live. And the reactions are quite good. And there doesn't seem to be much in the way of... Cool down. Hold pyro and... Maybe I'll put this right here. And, oh, placement blocked, and... Power push in here, right here. So if we can kind of get them in between an area, that could work. Oh, they destroyed that, how sad. Oh well, I guess the question is, right, 0% is the... Oh goodness, that's not good. Where's the beacon? Where's the beacon? Well, we did it. Not 100%, but... Decently close. Okay, yeah, this is a bit more complicated, especially since you can't check the affinities directly. Not just the defense, flying its hit enemies as they approach, weakening them, using pressure on defensive lines. Set. I probably could have put things farther away. Because it's the turrets that you can put a bit farther to extend your capacity, I believe. We have Shackling Mine, Exploding Prisoning 1, destroyed after it explodes. Trap blocking advance and buying precious ton. Oh, and we didn't use our skill either. That's right. And we pyroed a ground and it's pyro. Destroyed its locations, explosion, threats, or assault. Local superiority. Hmm. In that case, we gotta figure out what's best on what. Hmm. So, team AoE will work well for that. We should honestly just put down mines. So. Hmm. Okay. Should be able to use mines to deal with the Hilltrill shooters quite well. Other than that, I... Hmm, what would best be suited to what part? Most everything else is AoE, but we don't have any actual AoE to deal with this. I mean, team to, to deal with the single target, so... Hmm. Have to find another way to make do. The Shackling Mines would be good to deal with the Mida Trolls, but a center in a right flank. Hmm. So who would deal best with what? Melee and... Well, both are actually pretty evenly split. The first part, we can send pretty much everything other than Mines over to the center side. Well, kind of the left side then. But other than that, I... Hmm. Blazing Axe, which means flying, and Spectres do really well against the Mighty Trolls, but we'll need a balance. Hmm. I don't think we need all that much thought in this one. Especially since we can't immediately check everything. Okay. Down a mine somewhere around here. Let's put a mine down. Okay. And then, all right, cool. Let's start now. Okay, then. 
Inbound down the center. Go ahead now. I do like how the mines actually look a bit like the exploding flower things. It's fun. Should presumably blow up and kill them. Nice, simple. Then we got Stronghold Mechanism Hydro, and this is Paragi Fiery Might. And okay. Faction base, and can I... Still can't do anything there. And a bit of AoE, but... A shackling mine. Repairing now, which means we got more on the right flank. Other side is simpler, so we'll just... This here, but we can't... Can we actually expand our base in any way? I'm not even sure. Send more things. Shore up our defenses where things are... A bit weak, other than that, I don't imagine things will be all that complicated. Thank you, thank you, and down on the right. Should be fine. Mmm, but the reactions are alright. A Kikoban and an anti-personnel mine. Inbound on the right, we'll just take you out pretty easily, thank you. And this is Cryo Spectre. Hi, okay, cool. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Save things up until we need more. Stronghold Mechanism Hydro, which means... Well, let's just put these guys all down here. And putting these guys down by a Hydro Mechanism will allow some freezing to go on. Put this down over here, and yeah. Alright, are we close? But no AoE right now. That's the problem. And they totally miss? Oh, you're kidding. Big thing is, I think a Shackling Mod would be good to put down over here. The right flank... It's gonna be lots of guys at least once decent enough AoE capability. But it's fodder for now. Right, eight units left. Not that much damage taken, and okay, this should be fine. We can keep it permanently frozen, ideally, and then have the shack with mutton do a bit more even. Hmm. Alright then, this might be tough. Oh, and we can vaporize you. Thank you very much, and maybe I'll put you down right here. Maybe so. Oh, but... Oh, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Maybe. That was pretty decent, but I... Mm, this was a bad idea. Thanks. Good boom. Go for that boom. And oh my goodness, we need to try a bit harder. And okay, well that worked. Made a bit of a mistake, but it worked. Hmm. Deploying them uniformly will not produce ideal results. Concentrating based on threat level is a wiser plan. Hmm. Who and where? If it works, it works. It's really all. Hmm. But also, now the flanks are far away enough from each other that an enemy deployed one will not be able to hit the other no matter no matter what happens. Interesting. Hmm. A witch and witch. So team against flying. So team range. We don't have team range, but we'll need seasons in order to engage. Probably the seahorse too, because they're the only ones that can hit flying. And then everything else on the other side for oh, but no, not like this. Not right now. Hmm. Let me think. Single enemy. Kyo. Hmm. So, Hillage rules and Cryo Mechanisms on the left, everything else on the right for first round. Trolls Cryo on the left, everything else on the right. Okay. Hillage rules, everything else on the right. Okay. Should be good, presumably. Thank you, thank you. Space our foe. Six opposing units left. Should be decent enough. Flying team should take them out pretty handily. More foes inbound on the right, and cool. So, will we get... Oh, but if we're not doing any kind of physical, I can't imagine that... Oh, but we can get electrocharge reactions. That's good. Hmm, but... Oh, but he is a ranged unit. That's right. Can't target flying all that well, but still. 
Okay, cool. Put that there and... Maybe if we do that... Oh, but I think that missed entirely. Well, whatever. So left link is going to be... Check that out. So wave two is left flank. What do I have again? I have. I'm about to go all the way down. Big thing is it we range. I have. What do I have? AoE. It doesn't tell me what I myself have. I just have to remember. That's annoying. AoE range. Let me think. The Sissons, I have Spectres, I have Mighty Trills, and I have Seahorse, and we have a Kyrigi of some kind. Oh, I'm going crazy. Hmm. Let's just see what I have right now and think. These guys, and most of these guys would be... Swarm them with a team, you're good to go. Specifically, but you need a range for that. So right flank would be the Hill of Trills and the... Hmm... Presumably, the fire ones would be good. Okay, it's just Sissons right now, so who would hit better? Sissons would work really well on these guys, so Electro Slimes would work well on whom? Well, a melee team to swarm them. Actually, no. Swarm them here like this. Is their melee, which is better against range, team versus single target, should be fine. And they're also immune to Electro, which is also great. Just go ahead and do this. So thinking more about single target versus AoE versus team is probably going to do me a bit better above our Seahorse. And this is should actually be okay, but AoE range versus... Eh, we should be okay. Might be good to save things, but Electro Fighter and... So none of those can hit anything. Oh, wow. This is frightening. Okay, cool. Hmm, that's not good at all. You are dealing a good amount of damage, and I don't like that. Oh, but right, that's immune. Should have done that before. Bubble Seahorse and... Face the phone now, and the Bubble Seahorse will do... Electro attacks on... Well, AoE is going to be good against those team guys, and... Oh, but the right side is not short up in the slightest. I, and of course they're inbound on the right without... Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. You probably kill with a single melt, but this is... Embarrassing. I should just focus on putting more things on one side. Okay, then. Okay. And boom, we got one already, and... Come on, just... Can we hit a bit more, or... Oh my goodness. Give me another token! Another token. I'm starting to lose it. I, okay. Give me more. Give me more stuff. I am... This is not in a good position at all. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. Alright. Someone's dead, and then we can take the mighty troll down. Thank you. Just do not kill me, please. I am... This is not good. Well, only two units left, but... Uh, so more than anything else, AoE range and those kinds of synergies, and frankly, even how far away they are, numbers too. Numbers. Okay. Then we have four. It'd be funny to try to aim for getting 100, but I really don't mind. As long as I get three stars. Overall battle plan may change with every battle. Adapt disposition, quickly redeploying. Enemy commander. Flank center, momentous wave for healing. That could be, but I'll have to save that for when healing is actually relevant. That's the thing. The flying and ranged AoE, so bubber seahorses on the left, and it's this, that's single target. It's things that can hit, but sewers for sure, air might send for us, frontline melee. I have to forget flying, and we don't have any team units. This cannot target flying. So I guess in the interest of survival, I think that well, single target beats AoE, so I guess everything on center, except the bubble or seahorse for now. That could work. Hmm. On center, except the bubble or seahorse. Oh, but this is fine. For now. And then we can take this down. So a bit of combination could work. 
inbound down the center, they should do fine here. I have to get a bit closer to get hit by the turret, but I'm sure we'll be okay. Oh, the big hit from that was really good, too. They can hit each other a little. And then just wait until some of us take some more damage and... Cool, cool. Big hit, big hit. And you're inbound down the center. More deployable units, but we should probably wait until we absolutely have to get more stuff and... To apply things to their best possible location. Big issue is that the seahorse is very, very specific. On the center, so AoE isn't amazing on them, but it's what we've got. Okay, cool. It's left four, and then bound down the center, and what's on the other side? Really, I should have... Oh, but this, this is just center, I think. Actually, just center. Maybe. The fact that they can move so much is very, very nice. And, cool, and did I, oh, it targeted my own character, my own mech to heal it instead of, oh, that's not great, not great, okay, and it swirled a little, but, uh, it's nothing special. Support suppression, Usia, and cool. So we can just blow each other up, and the overloads are doing well, too, but, ah, oh, their speed is... Something impressive, and I don't mean in a good way. So it's all the left flank now. Interesting. That's... alright. Hmm. Well, let's face the foe. So saving as much as possible for the right time was a pretty good idea. Let's see. Let's see over here. And... That worked to take out one of them, but... Hmm. Siege mechanisms are getting kind of annoying. And good damage on the overload. Reactions in this are actually very, very strong, it seems. I like that. And big damage. Good thing that the seasons are not immune. The bubble seahorse, though, is... Okay, so we got another seahorse. That's convenient. Boundaries of the base, but... Uh, there's some limits here. It's the one unit left. And, okay, that was simpler. That was simpler. I had to make... Saving things in reserve helped more than I expected then. Assisting at a safe distance for elite position defensive. Be able to respond, attract fire, or take down key units. Be able to respond, and momentous wave. And how would I... Hmm. Let me just check this out. Age the enemy. Combat and defense. Stronghold, support beacons, and... Wait, 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 wait. Front one buildings... Zones will be visible, initiate combat, and okay. So we can't put them any closer anyway. The lanes are pretty stock, but... So center, then right flank, then center and right flank. So we should focus on probably keeping things in reserve until the right moment. That is flying, so that would be good against... Right flank guys, and... Wait. There are gonna be any... There are no team units whatsoever. So the only thing with any kind of advantage is going to be single target against AoE. Huh. It's tough. But... I should probably begin with the end in mind in the sense of... There are only things on center or right flank for each one, but the final will have both. I should probably actually focus on what would be better for each. Enter in. So center is the only one with seahorses, so all of these guys would almost certainly go there. Mechs always go center, and then... Right flank, maybe. Fungi. And then probably also... These. So, right flank... Mines. Right flank, mines, center... Mines and fungi on right. NECA on center. Zoomably. Hmm. It's a permutation of... Three is just basically one and two at the same time, so we can prepare it pretty adequately, but... So, mech on center. Fungi and mine on right. Probably Electro on center two, and then... Dave... Clearwater on center, and... Sunfrost on right. It's just 
Basically, here we on right. Single target on center except for the mine. Okay. On right, single target on center except mine. On right. Single target on center except mine. Okay. This. Hmm. Are we on right? Single target on center except the mine. Okay. Get them close enough that should be able to see some of each other. A little bit of connection between both flanks should be good. Alright then, cool. And oh, alright. Yep, see, we can connect a bit. The big thing is that seahorse is going to be some trouble. Oh, but we can get close to breaking the shield, which is good. Let's just see how this... This is good, this is good. It's Electro Stronghold Mechanism, and... Let's see. Another support beacon from over there. Okay. Cool, but they're, they're going in so much. Sunfrost, and... Cool. Hmm. Shackling Mine, probably another down here. Okay, alright. And then another beacon. It's query clear water. Okay, cool. You're right there, but you won't be attacking right now, is the thing. Shackling mine would be nice. But the big thing is, if we can freeze you, we got the super conduct. Okay. And since you're not attacking enemies proper, we're fine. Shackling mine. Let's do another of these, I guess. Floating ammo fungus. Cool. Fun. I guess. Three units left, and the Shackling Mon kind of went to waste, but we'll be okay. The things left are going to be you, so... That's... Oh, but that didn't quite hit. Whatever. Crushing, Usia, and... Can we... There we go. Should be clear for the next one, except... Oh! That won't hit. We literally have to wait until the next... Thing recharges, and before that they'll kill... By Sun for us, presumably. That's not good. And... Oh, that didn't... What? What? Oh, no. This is really, really bad. Okay. Alright, then. Hopefully we'll get close enough that one of the electro mechanisms can hit you. Shackling mine. Oh, but... Huh? Oh, when some of my guys die, they also drop stuff. This is... Not great. Oh, my goodness. I... Okay. But once you get closer, once you get closer, presumably... Uh, let's go ahead and die. Go ahead and die, I guess. Okay, nothing dropped that time. Nothing dropped that time. Okay, finally the lightning's hitting. Okay, but the right flank is in very, very bad shape right now. Hmm, hmm, I don't like this. And down on the right, and, well... Presumably we can... Hit you pretty hard. Just gotta make sure that we're in the right spots and... Cool, cool, cool. Down the center. Targeting each other as well as the mechanism, which is good for me. Cool. Support beacon for another Usia mech. Alright then. And the seahorses die very, very easily. So the question is, how much more is gonna be on the right? And oh, it's just more of these guys. Oh, I hate you so much. And then, Shackling Mon, I guess we'll just send them all down here. The Fire Guy is going to be an utter pain, though. Because I won't have a lot of good ways to deal with it. And, yep, it's not hitting. It's not procking. This is... Okay, but the Lightning is hitting, though. And then the last one is going to be the Floating Animal Fungus. I guess we'll do that. Cool. Position was blocked, but... It's interesting. The big thing is, is that all you have to really do is complete it. Thank you, thank you. It did get a little silly, I will say. And then, window of opportunity closes quickly, effect of AoE and delaying action, still amassing forces. Area of effect cripples strength, so effect it may be decided in a single stroke. Hmm. Boising breakthrough and... Guess I could maybe run over and use that on an enemy. Hmm. Left and right, and left is always... Always ruin guards. Hmm. Only ever ruin guards. So in that case, maybe everything other than... Well, maybe. 
That could be okay, but the superconducts won't do much, I imagine. Everything else could probably go on the right side. Mm hmm. Long as. Hmm. Proton Seaton's on the right side, everything else on the on the left side, everything else on the right. Hmm. Okay. Hmm, but we don't have seasons right now. That's certainly something. Okay, and this is far away enough that we won't be able to reach each other, so we can just place it like it is. Anything else on the right. Okay. And then, just like this. And, and the seasons, because they just won't attack us. Okay. Should be good. The AoE should be quite strong. Thank you. Port Beacon 4. Pyro Potion here. And before you hit me, we'll just cleave through again. Thank you very much. Nice, nice. And one Ruin Guard is coming. And boom. This is decent. Let's take you out again like that with a big old pillar of fire. Might be a bit overkill, but we should be fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Probably keep some things in reserve. The big thing is, we amass a bunch of citizens here. Those ruin guards will be just destroyed. And before any of that, thanks, take that down, and we don't have any more things to deploy right now, so we'll just wait for this to get deployed inbound on the left. Okay, cool. This should actually be more than capable now, ideally. Basically just one Ruin Guard and then a bunch of AoE on the other side. And thanks. Alright. That threw a little bit more. And cool. Oh, engaging on one side. Cool. Thanks. And oh, goodness. Placement is blocked. So they limit themselves in each other, it seems. Interesting. And very good AoE. We even swirl that. Cool. Pyro Spectre. Thank you, Pyro Potioneer. Because probably because of that death. And that took some time, but we're still good. It's just, the Ruin Guards... Walking those Ruin Guards using Sissons is... Crucial. Oh, there are two. Oh, okay, cool. I suppose. So, just... Going, boom, overload on one target. Okay, alright. Huh, huh, interesting. Maybe I should have done that a little bit before. Cryo mechanism, cool, and this will keep the Ruin Guard away, that's a big thing. This one actually seems pretty simple. Seems. Which is good for me. Just focusing all of my AoE on this side is, especially getting Pyro Swirls off, makes this very, very doable. Okay then. And, oh, more Ruin Guards. Great, okay, cool. Maybe we should have held those for the last, but this should still be more than good enough. Just wait until we can get a... Oh, okay, cool. Thanks, overload. With extra damage, but the big thing is that taking one out early cuts their DPS in half. Focus on killing one first and then getting rid of the other, and... That should be... That's the end of all the event content. Okay. Get all the rewards, and oh, we got Leeway stuff, we got Inazuma stuff, have Samaru stuff, and Fontaine stuff, so I wonder if Mondstadt reward materials might be from the analysis progress point total? It's possible for sure. Collect all these, it's a shame that they don't go up and over, but more mats is always a good thing, and this is 50 for 6, so... 600 from that in total, so presumably 120 more or so from the rest we get. Either way, that was fun. I like that. Defense scenario, so we'll get a total of 60 heroes wits from this too. You know, we might have not have had voice lines in a relatively little, um, small amount of lore, but... Wait, is there crushing pincer... That wasn't everything? There's something more? This is... is there a seventh one? Wait, wait... Let me see. Must have been something I didn't see then. A secret seventh scenario for crazy people? Oh wow. This would get 50 times 7. 
I suppose, and then 14 times 50 is 700, and then 3, 4, 5, 6, so... It's a seventh one for each somewhere. There is... wait, what? Can I... how do I... oh, oh, there was a seventh one for each. It just didn't drag, so it's not done yet. Counterattacks, penetrate, may found themselves surround a proper ratio of force, axis of attack, pressure on wings, pincer counterattack to collapse. Okay. You know... So there's more. All right. Well, we'll get all those rewards at once once we close this out anyway. Hmm. Zip skill has always got to be... Eh, this might be better, but... Grouping is... Well, there aren't a lot of... Single... Aren't a lot of teams here, that's the thing. Now, who will counter what? So all of you are single target to counter the AoE units. We've got... Flying, ranged, and that. So we need to focus on countering these guys, presumably. So siege, melee... Would mean probably some kind of sisson. That's good. Siege, melee, and... Hmm... Think about the reactions. Electro just wouldn't react with this at all. Hydra could react with any of these towers. Well, Cry was not relevant because that's their defense. Siege is good to take out, and these guys, I, I'm not sure. Need that much to deal with them, but single target ranged means team melee, so maybe hill trolls, but also. Hey, we could also be nice. AoE melee. I. This guy is literally always good, so I might stick to that. That's cool. As opposed to just the gang of Hillotrolls, which is a little less useful. So there was more. There was more this time. And we can vaporize on that tower. The faster we take these guys down, but wait, that did not hit anything. Did that only hit enemies? It might be. Oh, huh, okay. Guess we can still apply. Elemental effect. No, we can't even apply elemental effects to the towers. Never mind. And you're over there, which means... Oh, goodness. I may have made a very silly mistake. Maybe. Spending that all, that all that there was really, really bad. Because, right, they specified enemies, so towers won't do anything. Won't do anything to towers, so... The thing is, we need to focus on... Take you out, and oh, vaporize in the river is. Aha, uh -huh, that's good. That worked quite well. Okay, cool. And another, another, and uh huh. There we go. So just focusing on wet, but the ultra charge is gone. Is the thing. Okay then. So now the river should be relatively irrelevant, but the freeze is not fun to deal with. The faster we take this out, the better, but flying enemies also don't... This does not matter for them. So now we've gone to the other side of the river, which means... Good stuff for us, presumably. We just need to figure out how to deploy at the right time. Thank you. And, alright. If we flank you a little, we should be okay. But, oh, nobody can target you right now. Well, we're still fine. So all this works. Should probably place a bit closer, but we'll live. And... Right, right, right. Electro charge on the tower. And ooh, ooh. Something, something. Just gotta make sure. We gotta keep up the pressure. Use some abilities properly. Using them early to gain a quick advantage was good, but... Also, they can't hit midair, which is useful. And so that's one gone, but we need more damage on you. We could focus on taking out that tower, presumably, but I... Mm -hmm. If I can kill you before... Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Focus on... Uh, interesting. Uh, single target versus... Kill, kill... What? What? You're kidding. Come on, okay. Hmm, this is quite tough. And... Plus... Take one of you out, which means... Mm-hmm, all right. I don't like this. Don't like this much at all. And I... Uh, so this is one heck of a back and forth. All right, cool. 
Uh, and the, the defensive capability of the river is, frankly, what makes this so tough. It's the fact that I took one of you out, but that was definitely in an ill-advised. And uh, I need these systems to... Hmm. Main thing is that we can't just attack the towers with an enemy. And that, mm, that, that said, at the very same time, we can pretty reliably get rid of most of these things as long as we... Oh, and not having AoE is not great. Well, actually, we do have AoE, but it, uh, there are problems here. Definitely need to... There's just no reason to use any ability other than the Anima one ever. Ever. That... The power can be a single target nuke. There's enough in... Uh, yeah, it's just... You always want to use the Anima. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Alright. Fine. I'll live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so saving our abilities for when serious multi-target scenarios happen. Pick them out as effectively as possible is going to be the way to do it. Well, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Save this in order to deploy as quickly as possible. Thank you, thank you. Wait until we got some of that on there, but thank you, thank you. Hmm, the elements that we're getting troublesome. Hmm, mm hmm. Come on, come on, and this. Oh, but the pulling effect did very little because there were no elements there to swirl. All right, all right then. Hmm. And just pull and... Oh, you're kidding. This is even worse. Hmm. Okay. Alright, I guess. Hmm. I... What? Hmm. Nothing is hitting. This is actually terrible. Hmm. Feels if... Maybe something different and better. Hmm. Honestly, it's taking these guys so I can deploy them anywhere. Probably going to be my best option. Just to go in and snipe some other towers. Focus on healing them and sure. Hmm. Big thing is, I'm not even sure what having a crystallized reaction proc would even do. Hmm. Okay. Do it right here. Thank you, thanks. Oh, but you're purely... Hmm. Healing is useful, but it... Not a superconductor reaction, though. I... Hmm. So never mind, these guys actually suck. Okay. It... It's interesting to think about using them to snipe towers, but... If I can't do that, you know... It means very little. Mm -mm. Finch is good, though, at least... If reactions aren't causing me issues, and... The Finch is also totally immune... To... Hmm... The Finch is completely immune... To the hydro damage dealt by that other tower. That could be something to keep in mind, but focusing on sniping the rear tower is for arguable cheese is almost definitely going to be what I need to do to make this work. Can't even think of anything else at this point. Mm, but fighting in there is really, really bad for her and okay for them. That's dangerous. But that said, taking advantage of immunities is really, really nice. Okay. Cool. And... Thanks. 
Let's take you out with a bit of that. Electricity and... Uh, uh. So what if I do this? Yeah, I just use the finches. Uh, 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 okay. But their damage is horrible. I cannot actually do that. Most likely. Just trying to focus on taking them down a little while protecting my base, taking advantage of a rear assault whenever possible, while just avoiding the river. So the nice thing is that the center is really, really hard to defend. I can focus on keeping the river. Hmm. Well, just avoid having to cross the river and instead just take out these guys. That said, I feel like maybe siege mechanisms would actually be better anyway. It's possible. The ice is also very troublesome. So, and only a few are getting taken out at once, too, but this is fine. Focus on spin around that, and cool. And... Come on. Freeze a little, and... So the advantage of this is actually, even if their damage is pretty awful, just managing to avoid having to deal with a significant portion of the enemies is very, very good. Now I see it. Now I see it. Okay, cool. So this is the marvelous cheese that I had to take advantage of to win. Cool. Fun enough. Okay. So that was actually pretty hard fought. I actually had to think that one through. Impressive. Here we delaying actions, and the last one is... Support a combined arms operation. Presumably this will be... Three. Yep, it's all three. Nice. Do you have the whirlwind? Enemy force, explosives, and rank power and range. In front of defensive lines, deliver your setback to creating their advantage. Counterattack with minefield, stop the defense strategy, combining attack and defense, more effective than a static defense. Hmm, okay. Flank, center, right flank, and... This is going to be... Seasons are good there. Personnel mine, but... Ooh, oh, oh, okay. True hmm. orb, and... I just think... What would be best where... I'm gonna run into teams and... But that can't target flying. Hmm, okay. Huh. So the mines actually aren't good for much in wave one at least. But in wave... <sighs> you can see them being good against the seahorse. Take out its shield and the ruin, great, the ruin guard just because it's a very big and strong enemy. But other than that, I'm... Um, Kind of at a loss. We're also good on the Finch because of pyro damage, but we're gonna have to reevaluate every time, frankly. Single target, definitely the Sundross for. Sundross phase one is. Go left, you go right. You go middle, just to deal with the range. Also middle, probably also middle. Probably gonna save the mines for later. Fair that mine in the image actually looks a bit more like a volcano than a flower bud. A flank means right flank, sun frost. I did not mean to do that. Did not mean to do that. That was embarrassing. <laughs> embarrassing. Right flank, sun frost. Left flank, you. You in here. And the seasons will actually. This should be good. Let's face our phone out. So certain enemies, if I can split them between lanes as much as possible, that should actually be pretty good. Let's see what happens. Either way, should be kind of a stomp for the Kadagi. And a little bit of melt support is also good. That said, putting them close to the middle also allows them to hit enemies from farther away, so... Six laps, so we should probably focus on... Hmm, okay. So we're good. So I have personnel mine, so let's figure out what we have. Center is still good. Right flank. Probably gonna want to leave this here and then just use 
big old mine over here. Okay. Should be good. The issue is, is, okay, and only six at once. Kind of forgot about that part. So the Ruined Greater should eventually be able to get hit by some of the bow guys. But, oh, this location is very, very strange. I, hmm. Maybe I should have put things closer. Damage it's dealing is not as strong as I expected, though, which is good. Uh, maybe I'll put this guy here. Maybe. Down the center is... Oh, goodness. That's some news. And... Oh, it broke. Pretty simple. Yeah, that's good. Big thing is just making sure you have enough to deal. Portal shooter. Probably right here to find some melt support. Thanks. And we can melt this one, which is great. That was good. And now we have... Kyrigi right here, which... Zuma we might want to use on left flank versus... No, you're going center, if at all possible. Oh, maximum reached. Okay, so we'll wait until... Something dies, then. I've actually done really, really well in that case. Pleasantly surprised. And cool. And that shield's gone. Exciting. Once somebody dies, we'll... Take that out and put another Kyrigi down. So who else is Bubble or Seahorse? Man, I can't put any more down, can I? I'm kind of stuck. And I... Mm, actually... There we go. Oh, that was fast and not in a good way. And inbound over there and... Oh, goodness. I, okay. Cool. Instant blow up. Personnel mine and fiery might and... Where are the others? Stronghold Pyro. Then a... This should be useful. Probably. Mostly focus on... Ooh, okay. Actually, the mine and this should be really, really useful, so... We're chilling. Very close to failure, basically, but... Oh my... Oh, oh my... What? There was more? You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Die already, die already, and... Not... No! 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 Oh, come on. We, we didn't even get... Okay. Okay. Oh. In that case, maybe I need to focus more directly on... Wings. The big thing is that the Ruin Greater goes really, really wide. And that's not a good thing. This is a good spot for you to be in, but... I... Mm, should be okay. The more we put you on flanks... I mean, on corners more likely it is that we'll be able to work things out. The big thing is, I needed to use my skills a bit more probably, though to be fair, skills. this skill actually isn't all that amazing for this one. Port Beacon, Stronghold Pyro, and what if we take that out and... simple, simple. Type Personnel Mine and... probably this right here. Okay, cool. Oh, but we could probably use the Ruin Greater to and mode and maybe crowd control the Ruin Greater a little. I'm not even sure, honestly. Doesn't do any kind of red shred, red shred either. And, uh -huh. Thing is, once that gets off, we'll swirl. That should be useful. Bubble Seahorse. Might want to save that for angling. Kyrogi and... If you're right here, maybe I'll put you here. Just for fun. Another one of you right here to focus on the sissings. Should be fine. That AoE is good. Then on the left is you. Hello there. Hello. Oh, and we've reached our maximum number of deployable units. Great. Okay. Cool. And... Alright then, what if I... Mm, that did not do much all that special. So it's time for the final round, and I think we went in a bit stronger due to better mod of one of them. Big thing is, you gotta be right here, but we still don't have... Uh, gonna have to use that mine at a decent moment once things are actually dead. That Sunfrost should probably get taken down by the Seahorse, presumably. Oh no! Damage isn't all that high. And once you're here, we'll still maximum number reach. 
The reaction spam on the Finch, it should be good, but... Yeah, the fact that it can kill things pretty much instantly is not great. On the left, okay. You need... Uh -huh. There we go, inbound down the center. Once something's dead, we'll use... A bit more in the way of... No, this is fine. Four units left, and... No mind. Two out of six. Okay. Huh. All right. Take out you. We would want probably some of this, but we don't have any kind of single target. That's a shame. And oh, oh, this is quite tough. Sorry, my Kadaki, and a and one more here. Thanks. One. There we go. It's how to have a mine on hand to kill the finch. There we are, cool, it's done. Honestly, given the explosions of the finches and how close they get to the monolith, it might not be possible to actually get every single piece, so to speak, to get 100% health remaining. Well, it is what it is. Not a good amount of stuff. So we finished that. Cool. So in that case, we have our rewards to collect, and, oh, didn't get a big thing, all right, fine, okay, see, the moot's ending, analysis progress, and we sure finished that out, let's check out our cloud forge and see what it might need for ascension, enhancement bonus, crag chiseled forge, Cloud Forge, standard issue weapon, yeah, okay. The moot's ending. Almost over, still with something to say to you. Scenarios for study. Cam and cables of the law. So that's all done. That was actually really, really fun. I like the minigames. Talented helper, and of course, observing these war games, all sorts of strategies put in practice. Wide range scenarios can analyze and learn from. Broaden our model, take into account different types of soldiers and special traits. Variety of training manuals for different units to study. Interested? Happy to provide you with manuals. Try out in your spare time. Just got finished, thanks to... Very busy, tried to cut down in similar scenarios so it didn't get repetitive. Haven't had enough, well, come back and keep playing. Half of the staff and the representatives might express my sincere gratitude. Let's work with you again in the future. Even better at wiping out monsters and securing our lands if I have the time. So smoothly, manage to strengthen our connections with groups, help people across in the nation. In the continent, words from watching you. To kill at some point, come back and test out more scenarios. This mage fighting the Snowboard King. Or to set Rune Guard or a Geo Bishop. Okay. So that's. Oh, and then they give us. I guess they were waiting? Can't imagine they were waiting for that quest to finish, but either way, we have lots of stuff now. Yeah, it seems like those rewards were weirdly delayed. Huh. Well, all right. Can't imagine there was any kind of glitch, but I think we got everything we had and needed. And then you have analysis progress. We got a good amount. Primos from that around 1,000, I think. You can get another roll on standard now. Check. So how much would this be if I... 16,000, so that's 100, and then... C7, and then 4, then 2. 143 there, so 183 if we cash all those in, so. Sigwin can be guaranteed. Also, we've got a number of. Oh, power algorithm. Get from this. Oh, those count as domain challenges. Oh, that's cool. Algorithm Stronghold Firepower Repose. Crushing Pincer Maneuver, and Analysis Progress. There we are. Claim all of these. Can get another roll on standard right now. I think I might do that. So we're at. This will take us to 76, I believe, in terms of. Let me see. 76 pity on normal. Let's see if we get anything. Getting in range and. Oh no, nothing. Oh well. Get three more rolls on standard during this battle pass period, so... 
I guess the big question is, let's see if we can start striking that weapon. Oh, okay. Manuals in your debt, general staff. Tent God hasn't been around all that long. Metal with based. Cutching conferred with the other seven stars. It's time to reorganize. No lack of advisors. Strategists would work alone. One individual's influence is limited until gathered. Consultants and advisors together for the department. Streamlining the division process. More accurate intel. Grants of water types as possible. And never finance the troops with greater precision. See, explain all the comprehens comprehensible. This time you see her, will prove useful to you someday. Presumably, the other part would be the same branch of the dialogue tree. Yep, it doesn't matter what we pick. Whether we understand or don't, he says the same thing. Kind of funky. Scenario, cutching, promoting, synthesizing intelligence, to facilitate comprehensive assessment and training, test organization, deployment, and command from other angles. Dense reading manuals, stricter than war games, which begin from running through. Hmm. Sounds useful. Huh. Saying goes, not like a commander never passes up an opportunity. Soldiers' tales are true. When games have panned out, riding them up would be slow. I'll do my best. So I guess that's set up for a possible rerun if people like it. So, so do any of them have anything new to say other than Sudang? I don't expect them to. Pass, a lot of important things, come out when you get the time, so I'll go and do my best. you have anything new to say, or... Time to part- oh, so they have new dialogue. Did not dare disturb you, we missed except my apologies. So it's good we talked before, because otherwise we would have missed what we saw here for the meeting. To learn, treat, and dress them with utmost humility. Not have disappointed the expectations, weren't recorded in many key findings. Adapting tactics, vagrants, and bandits that Rome can more efficiently be dealt with. Hmm... Time is right, chance to visit Inazuma and witness the fruits of our labor. Pleasure given them my regards. Nanami left a deep impression, pass on my fine words. So then, do you have anything more to say about... Frederica? Back to Mondstadt, collaboration go, not bad at all. Supposed to flaw, don't have good long-range capacities of mobile forces. This is a Quapric Mecha with heavy bows, couldn't penetrate the armor, had to get in close. Had the intel that the recon would give. Amber, or... Emma told, was she was she the explosives maniac from the Koi event or attached to the arrowheads? Explosive arrows. Pretty smoothly, all gone for you, been great, much out of it. Mobile opponents like flying fungi, muskets were slow and precise, don't well against them. Rapid rotation tactics, as opposed to formation, flexible, identify weaknesses to work on just something more clearly, pump to be honest. And then it's for Vax, you and Monstat. Thing left is Mr. Citadel, Citadel of Regzar, the Infundit. Yeah, when we, maybe if we get a Chevro's hangout. Meet again. Dia and Simon's friend. Prince Samara, war games go. Help me learn. From Inazuma. Couldn't defeat them, presumably, because they were specters that Nele couldn't reach. Sounds like the strategy used by others. So I don't realize what we need to do, like a revelation. Simulated monsters, analyze scenarios carefully enough. We'd ensure victory even for Eremites. Average will equipped. See you in Samaro next time. Other Eremites, Dia, and Sino. Possible. Interesting. Well, I'm sure that won't actually happen. Let's see what we need to upgrade our new bow. It's technically meant to kind of be for Sethos, but it's actually not all that good on him anyway, which is kind of sad. Another sack greatsword, and may as well condense them in case we ever run to a scenario where we need multiple equipped at once. So I use this for cutching the R5 fully leveled one, but actually it turns out that the new battle pass sword wolf thing is actually a bit better for her than it. It is what it is. Also, the fact that this is actually not all that good for Sethos is actually better with slingshot anyway. Alright, cool. Until mastery decreased, so... Interesting. So the best way to do that, probably, if you wanted to use it with the Sethos, would be firing off one bow shot and then using his burst to decrease the energy again. Most likely. Let's check out this description. Well, it's about Tianheng, filled with gems, depths of the chasm, rich with jade, nation of a thousand hills known for its abundance. Critical mining and smelting located in Blanqua Forge Carton Mount Tianhung itself, which 
Some people have commented on that back when the description was first leaked that since we don't see where the Black Cliff Forge is that we see Tion Hing already. Spinning the mountains, workshops, furnaces, connecting tunnels, blasted black by dust. Since Tion Hung is over here, maybe it isn't there, but that said, just based on my knowledge of Japanese and similarities to Chinese, presumably all of these might be the Tion Hung Mountains, especially given that the, this is very explicitly the entrance to the Blackwood Forge, which as of now, which as of now we can't really go into. It's still blocked off. But presumably that's where our final Hewlett expansion will go. But this is clearly not Mount Tianhung, if this if Tianhung is one mountain marked over here. But also, this is where Shenha's house is, and her allegiance originally was Tianhung Thaumaturges, just like with Chongyu. No, that's Chongyu, it's Chongyu, so she's related. She's still connected to Cloud Retainer's abode, quote-unquote, in her profile description. So that presumably would mean that these are actually the Tianhung Mountains, and there was a bit of a misinterpretation in translation and localization, but... I'm still holding out hope that we actually get Blackwood Forge one day. It's also fun that we can't go up on here at all. Big thing is that we do know for sure now that Notlon is basically over this way. Because there was that guy last year in that one sort of Fontaine quasi-introduction quest who said, Yeah, Notlon is on the other side of Samaria's Desert. But the small trailer we got with the Saurians, the dinosaur dragons that we can morph into in Notlon, will be able to. They were able to see a bit of this part of Samaria Desert, and tri they triangulated the location so that it looked to be generally over around this way on the west of the desert. How far it up, up it extends and how far down it extends is still to be seen, and frankly, we don't know if we'll get the Samira coastline along the way, because I don't imagine they'll keep this totally blocked off forever. Big thing, the theory I've always had and other people have corrobor corroborated, is that they mention a lot of sea monsters in Port Ormos, so presumably we might get it with some kind of upgraded wave rider, upgraded over water traversal. Or maybe they might just be really silly and add Fontaine diving mechanics to other areas around Tavat, which would be a lot of work. A lot of work, but very, very cool too. But it's just, there'd be so many things, that places that they'd, that they'd have to add entirely new things to. And frankly, keeping track of everything, everywhere they've had water to go back and check where there might be. Well, to be fair, you literally see pretty much any water from over land. Now that would actually be very, very interesting as a way to revitalize old areas if they just said, Oh yeah, you can dive anywhere now. Go and check out the entire ocean between Liwei and Inazuma. There were some people theorizing that they might add the Dragon Palace underneath, which is a famous underwater location for various Japanese myths, but because there was something mentioned in a week about a Dragon Palace, but it was almost certainly just referring to Enconomia in imprecise terms, terms at least that's what I would surmise. Not entirely sure. Either way, we have... Check this. Tumultuous years and the fires of war die the land red, where the ancestors of the mountain tribe sought, shot, sought shelter. Long forgotten passages, tunnels to an ancient underground realm as in the deep places beneath the earth. So, presumably, yeah, Black Cliff to Condry. It would be cool. That said, it's enough that I don't really see it coming. Well, I guess the big question is, when Conria and Celestia chapters start coming out, there would be limits on what they could add exploration-wise to areas like Conria and Celestia, which I don't presume to be absolutely massive. The big thing to me is, I feel as if they're saving certain things in previous areas to sort of fill out new areas added during the Conria and Celestia chapters. I've said this before, but I also think that might be when they're saving a lot of character alts for, like, again... Delusion, Diluc, Abyss Kaya, maybe a quote-unquote full-power Lisa. People have talked about the idea of a full-power five-star Lisa before, and that would be cool. But at the very same time, her four-star version, the only one we have, when you ascend her, finally, take her to 90 level cap, 
just says, oh yeah, this is my true power, the true Witch of Purple Rose, which implies that that is her everything, so to speak. That there isn't really anything else she's hiding. Any new kind of kid, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we could get five star amber, and they can make an make an amber that's actually usable. Uh, probably not. But either way, it does seem as if <sighs> there might be a black cliff entrance to Conria. The big thing is that it's implied that a lot of the ruins we've been to, particularly in Sumeru and Liwei, basically are just Conria proper, or at least sort of the fringes of it. I guess the big question is, would Conria be a layer on the world map, or something like Enconomia's Underground Chasm and Sea of Yore? I think it'll probably be instance like the latter. Because there are a lot of people myself who speculated that, you know, the only reason maybe that Underground Chasm and Enconomia were a separate map of layers were because they didn't have anything like the Underground map yet. But given that they added Remuria as another instance to location, even after they'd had separate underground stuff at a higher level for a long time, I think it'll probably be instanced. People talk about the Dandelion Sea. I think it's possible that we might get it, especially since most mentioned locations eventually do find their way into the game. But at the very same time, they also do talk about it as a purely legendary place. That said, there are plenty of things that are supposedly purely legendary that we have encountered. And in particular, there is a very easy to miss pseudo quest, a hidden a hidden exploration objective in Inazuma with Hanayama Karu over in Tadarasuna or Kanazuga, however you want to call that area. Then walks after you to Tadara Tales, where you go over, it's not marked by anything. Give her flowers, you kill Whopper flowers, and she talks about starting a sea of flowers to match one in Mondstadt. Which I think is suggestion that a dandelion sea maybe will actually eventually be added to the game, but it's just a bit too early to tell, frankly. We're definitely going to get Dornman. The big question is... When they'll add that. Because it sounds like a way to get to Snezaniya. I don't know, and we still have to get Mount Asus. I was very, very surprised when we did not get Mount Asus during the 4.0 cycle. Appalachians for Scarf of the Darkened Paths was the founder of the Yun family of Liwei. That would be Yun Jin's family. Yeah, but at the very same time, we're not getting a second Furina story quest. I think it's a bit different because Furina actually isn't really an Archon anymore, quote-unquote. Venti definitely needs a bit more resolution to his story, but I'm not sure it might come. In, it'll come in the form of a second story quest. They always, always leave the door open for any character to get a second. That's already had one, but... The big thing about it is that... Presumably that might mean a second Mondstadt Trounce Domain, but with, and therefore a third Mondstadt Weekly Boss. And it, I don't... I certainly wouldn't hope that it would spite Notlon or Con, Notlon or Sinsaya, Conry, or Celestia by giving any, any of them only one Weekly Boss. I guess the big thing is just... Nalan and Sneznai are very plainly going to be, you know, a full-year patch cycle, but we still don't know enough to say whether Conrad and Celestia will be two years or one year with just the end of the game, quote-unquote, or the end of the patch chapter. Smith's place on the stage of history. Stage. Well, Yunjin's on the stage, too. Not a Smith, though. Under progenitors by countless generations of artisans. Leave but a scant few wands, ancient this craft, wood and bamboo, bamboo carved into birds, fly for three days without landing, the apex of artisanry. Presumably, if that's not purely hyperbole, some sort of clockwork mechanism intertwined with the Xi'an. Apprentice of the Xi'an, techniques employed to serve Xi'an teachings, person fought aside, Zhongli on campaign, I guess, Diwang, Stone King. I mean, this means Stone King Latin. Honestly, if they ever retconned anything in terms of localization, I'd be totally fine if they just went and changed all the pseudo-Latin terms they used for localizing Liwei stuff back into the original Chinese. Because I know I've told everyone's favorite Italian about this before, but originally Liwei wasn't even going to have a Chinese language name. They were going to call it Lunia, as in sort of, you know, Lunar or the Moon, which... 
is a bit similar because Liyue literally means Jade Moon. But frankly, it would have been a bit too far because, again, you know, a few years ago when this game first came out, you know, being a publicly Chinese work was a lot less beneficial or acceptable. Three Adepti, three Xi'an, one after another, granted instruction in secret mechanical arts. Techniques such even quads to be plucked to mold Nances. Rotting waste wood fashioned in birds and beasts. Elect life is combined, the observing eye. Cliff forged from clouds are cloud forged. What do we know? Delight in the contrast between clouds and forging, presumably. Fancy the latter day play on you and meaning cloud, right? Founders life dedicated to the forge and craftsmanship. Send heavenly art, guardian star of artisanry. Oh, so just like in the description of Rain Slasher, I believe, and arguably, I think Rust too, they describe this ascension, possibly to Celestia. Not but legends, no Shion art built the forge, nor whisper cloud, one flick and hammer stroke at a time by ordinary people over centuries. The Golden God's contract never stipulated that mortals could never surpass the supernatural after all. Genius craft, and that's, oh, repetition of what was said before. Right, right, and three days, scant but three wines, and rock into workshops, clouds into manses, black with forge, well-being of all the people serve. Clever and clumsy, what benefits is clever, that which, that which is not is clumsy. Hmm. One other interesting thing about... The content beta test, which is the source of our knowledge about Lunia, it's also suggests that the Pyro Archon's name, well, honestly, we don't even know for sure whether we'll get a Pyro, Pyro Archon at this point, though, at least in a standard sense, was I'm from the Ars Geisha, whose specific attributes I actually kind of forget. Oh, we need Golem Hilts. Interesting, but we have a lot of these. This is going to be funky. So in that case, it might be time to go on a golem hunt. Possibly. Either way, I'm not really going to use this much, but I do like to level everything, and things are going to cost a whole lot less while the event is still active. I think I do have enough Aerociderite for this, though. Might not have enough golem hilts for now, but the Aerociderite is definitely there. Hmm, let's check. So what's nice is that the crafting table is right over here. I do find it interesting that after all this time, the most conveniently placed crafting table is still right in Liyue. I mean, crafting bench. Because yeah, crafting table is Minecraft, but people keep calling it a crafting bench. And this in here is actually a crafting bench. Funny. So we don't want the Mona one, we want... Thesley and so we have three versions of the good one and one version of the bad one because Mona's version mathematically is ever so slightly worse than her Thesley and oh what do you have it I don't think we actually need all that much more but we actually do have oh my and of course it went back to the Mona one that's so stupid whatever okay in the end, it doesn't make much of a difference in the long run anyway, but... So we have 22 of those, and... If we made four of these, we would probably be fine. Let's actually make three and see if we get a double product. That is, we did not. Okay. And yeah, this should be basically perfect. And that time we got more. So let's ascend the bow a little more and see how many golem hilts we have and might need. So this would be a nice excuse to go back to Ramori and beat up some of the funny golems, maybe try out and see how... Eh, you need Geo on the party, so I don't imagine that Corrin would be all that useful there. I would need... let's see. How many of the big hilts do we have? Not that many. Still smoldering, so we need nine more of those, so let's check real quick. Definitely have enough of the Fatui badges, though. I also do want to go and fight the... Should have enough for one level, but I mean one ascension, but we will not have enough for more. So yeah, they made Dory have just a strictly version version of the Sucrose one, which is funny because presumably most people would have Sucrose at this point. But yeah, the ones that sometimes produce double are always almost always strictly better than 
the ones that refund in, a, in the long run, unless you very specifically don't need a lot of the higher level ones and maybe need more of the lower ones, but if you need more of the lower ones, you usually can just avoid crafting them into the higher rarity ones, so it's really not all that much of a difference. So we need... 16 more of the still smoldering hilts, which means we should go over to Faded Castle and Remuria and kill all the golems on the map. So that'll be fun. It's an excuse to go around and beat some, beat some stuff up again. Just wondering what the best possible team to take them down would be. Kind of feels as if it... Oh, but Shavros would not be able to work with Actually, we could probably use our... is this team. Probably wanna put in... Scoured out with some Yai, though. I've been using her as a non-Dendro. A non-reaction DPS, not on an aggravate team. More than I've been using her with Dendro, just because she works so well with... Our Okino official Jabros. So the issue is, is that... She still has a Thunder Soother set. Which is... Okay, it's decent, but the uptime on the Electro application is not as much as I might like. If you're not running her against Dendro, well, just in general, Gilded Dreams is strictly better than this, because that's just a free 60% damage bonus when she's off field, and 40 even when she is, so it's, well, for skill damage, but that's where... Basically all of it comes from- oh wait, no, it's 70. It's not 60, it's 70. It's even more. Yeah, it's a double for basically all of her relevant damage because I don't really use the burst on this team. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go over- this team is so ridiculous. Epic, mostly Fontaine girl power team. Actually, no, it's evenly split between four different nations because- I did find it really, really funny in Arlequina's story quest, where she said, Oh yeah, you know, the part where I said I was from Fontaine. That was bluffing. It was entirely cap. Because, if I recall correctly, she said, because people would otherwise ask way too many questions about what I was trying to protect. Fontaine, and to be fair, it's not as if those questions have been entirely cleared up as a result. Hmm. Cool if we could break those windows, especially since this is actually properly over land, but at the very same time, this... This isn't Fontaine water, so we wouldn't be able to dive in it anyway. It wouldn't make sense. It really was. Mm-hmm. Well, that said, you know, I wouldn't call Arokino much of a gaslighter. She's actually... Actually remarkably straightforward. I do find it funny how frankly awful Tartagli is as a judge of character. Well, Tartagli and Scaramouche, because Tartagli it makes Arlequino seem worse than she is, but what he says is still mostly accurate. What, is she, what does he say about terrible personality? About garbage. And then, let me see. Nothing to say, okay. True crazy. Yeah, exactly. He, he just... Well, it's just... He's mean and kind of stupid, too. God bless him. It's just... People had been saying before, and to be fair, I guess a lot of it was just, you know... It is hard to figure out reasons for genuinely, irredeemably evil characters to work with Traveler. So it makes sense that they don't really do that. If Tutori is actually playable, which probably will be the case, I, mean, I presume it would be a segment rather than another portion, so to speak, the original. Because it's just way- it would just be way too hard to explain, okay, why is the Traveler willing to work with the Doctor? Why is the original Doctor willing to work with the Traveler? And the fact that every part of every segment is a different part of his life. Oh, yes, and? When have I denied being stupid? Rugero's notes, but not over there, right? Should be part over. 
One of these ways, other way. I don't think it's all the way up top. Just still check it. It's been some time since I was last in this castle. Yep. So let's just activate this and go over. The big thing is the Zondik's notes in Samero. Because Zondik is pretty much confirmed to have been Detore's old name when he was still working in the Academia. They talk about him being suspected of killing somebody, but what's actually very interesting is that there's actually a bit of vagueness over whether he actually did kill someone or whether somebody else killed somebody and framed him for it to get him kicked out. Because the big thing is that he was very interested in working with Ruin Machines, which was, you know, a no-no in the Academia. You know, thou shall not make a machine in the likeness of a human mind. But... It's also implied that he attempted to save his adventuring team from a rampaging ruin machine, and... The implication that he randomly choked someone to death... Seems kind of nonsensical. Yeah, exactly. And I think that even if... Even though the Dottori we've seen so far, actually both of them... Manga Dottore and Dottore from the Samara Quest, who do seem, for all intents and purposes, to be different people from different stages of his life, do seem to be kind of horrible and irredeemable. I think there's a decently strong chance that we get maybe an even younger Dottore, or a Dottore who was, for some reason, just a bit more innocent, less openly hostile. I... I don't think it would have been possession. As in the ones who were resisting getting destroyed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think one of the resisting segments is almost certainly, you know, more pleasant than the Tori we encounter in that a playable Tori would be one of those segments. It is interesting because... There are a lot of characters who are not playable and probably will not be for a while, who, regardless, if you mine in the files, they have weapon types stated. In particular, Detore is a Claymore character, apparently. That might change, but Scaramouche, his model is always marked as a Catalyst model, and he eventually was a Catalyst, even though the model he used while playable was entirely different. Interestingly enough, both Dane's Leaf and Skirk, even though they respectively use the tall man and medium medium woman models, both of them have their weapon types listed in the files as unknown. We have no idea how that's going to work yet. Okay, so we should lure all these guys into one place. Get multiple overloads. We could probably actually... This should be useful. Let's try to stay in as central position as possible, and cool. Oh my goodness, okay, and boss over there, and there we go. That was very, very good. Cool. Simple enough. Let's get... We need 18 hilts in total to take Quad Forge to maximum, so how many do we have right now? Either way, we probably still need to go down into Remuria proper. I guess the big question is... Stressing... I guess the question is, you know, is it more elegant and concise to call her Stressing or the Italian? I think we I think we all agree that's a little fun if we just say the Italian. Like she's some sort of secret agent with a code name. I don't know. But either way, there are a few more golems in here. But as I was saying, as I was saying. Of course, if more Italians show up, we might have to change that anyway. Yeah, exactly! And we like drama, don't we? Everything is overly serious. We're all constantly stressed. Yeah, exactly. It's basically the same. But, as I was saying before, Coffee, what is your theory on the nature of the relationship between Elaine and... Sandrone and Marianne? Hopefully, hopefully. You might have to fight for your position. Which could lead to unpleasant things, so... Maybe we should all make a pact that if more Italians show up, we just... 
immediately show them the door. That was a joke. For a number of reasons. But, as I was saying, we've talked before. Because I was saying no more Italians allowed, or that you might have to fight for your position. Or both. Or neither. But, as I was saying... The whole thing with Elaine and Sandrone is... Oh, is in... What do you mean by Leyline Memories? That the Marianne we see is basically a record in the ley lines, and that she's not really connected to the real Marianne at all. Oh, that's an interesting theory. I haven't even thought about that. But the Italians are in the ley lines. That's why I can make lasagna in this game. But basically... It would have come out sooner or later, but stressing me out is a proud Italian. And a lot of her conversations are about Italy. Which is a fun place that I did go to once. The food was really, really, really good. There was no way around that. The food was just incredible. But as I was saying... Oh, and there were two here. That's good. It's nice that there are a lot of them. That they're basically the only land enemies here, given just how many of them you have to take down. The fact that they're nowhere else. But, go over here and... I never said it was your fault. I was just saying that you're a proud Italian. Okay, okay. I mean, it's, it's not your fault. It's not your fault you were born in Italy and that you live in Italy. It's just... It's not like I'm mad when you talk about the funny things that happen, because they're funny things that happen. 30 and okay, we need four more effectively of the purple ones, so we need to figure out another location where we can find Praetorian Golems. Okay, good. I would I would hate to make someone feel ashamed for being Italian. That would go against everything I stand for, which is I guess liking Italian food. There are worse things to stand for, I guess. But as I was saying. I could never, I could never. Not for everyone's favorite, everyone's favorite Italian. Okay. So that might be enough. Let's do the math real quick. I, I'm gonna go ahead and say this, that British food is not bad. I'm not a big baked beans person, but especially if you go into region, regional cuisines, because many, many, many years ago, my dad made... A Cornish made us Cornish pasties for dinner, which there are these basically meat pies from Cornwall. Actually, they're very, very similar to the Eula signature dish, a moon pie slash stormcrest pie, because you know, the moon pie it's not like a moon pie dessert, it's a Mondstadt moon, moon state in German. It's basically a Cornish pasty, and they were really, really good. I think. Food tastes are ultimately very, very subjective. It's largely a matter of what you're raised with and things that play to, you know, just your own unique idiosyncrasies. You haven't eaten our crocodile jerky. It's kind of sad that once you kill everyone in Tanit, you can never get any more crocodile jerky. Or, frankly, that you just never really get any more crocodile jerky in general. 10 and... This gives us 20... 12... It would be good to maybe go back and craft now. Indian food is really, really good, too. That is undeniable. I think killing... This is probably going to be the last golem here, and I think killing it will give us basically just enough. I had to farm a lot of these before for the sake of Arlequino's scythe, too. It's the one actual signature five I have. I... Oh, is in, in terms of being interesting or enticing, or in terms of being... Kind of cool or useful gameplay wise. Because, in terms of being useful gameplay wise, and I actually didn't know it until last patch's super boss event. Because before that, I'd only ever checked using Adeptus' Temptation, which is the only, still the only five star dish in the game. But the thing about it is that even at Delicious, it, 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 it only increases crit rate by 12, but a few very specific dishes in particular. Deluxe Signature. Which is the, you know, the cheese hamburgers, basically. The sort of naked cheeseburgers. They can give you, even though they're three-star dishes, they can give you 20% crit rate and 20% crit damage, because normally, Delicious Version gives you just 20% crit rate, 
But the signature versions of Chi-Chi's dish, Deluxe dish, and Winnie's dish, and I've eaten all of the Winnie ones and all of the Deluxe ones, so I can't show them right now because I use them. As you see, they give you 20% crit rate, delicious normally, but the signature versions give you 20% crit rate and crit damage, which means that whenever you can use food buffs, they are really, really good. Calling you whatever it's not a problem is about twice as long as either, either of those. Pun intended. But, and then we got the Pate's de Fruit with Eleni. But in terms of being interesting or enticing, I might say actually... I like the Yule one, just because she does have the unique and somewhat dubious honor. Because it kind of reflects weirdly on the devs of being the only character with a 4 star signature dish. But in terms of something I might actually like to try, quite frankly, I'd probably say... The Crab Row Tofu that Yanfei does. Because I really, really like tofu and meat dishes. Because in the West, generally, tofu is only ever used as a meat substitute, which to me is just understandable but sad. No comment, no comment. I actually, I'm not a huge Eula fan. I haven't even leveled her to 90. But... I've had Mapo tofu a few times in real life. Once I added a P.F. Chang's, which is not really an authentic Mapo tofu. Well, what can I say? I have limited resources, and I try to focus on leveling the newest characters possible. I'll get around to Yula eventually once I'm all caught up. But... I've had Mapo Tofu a couple of times from actual authentic Asian restaurants. And it's really, really, really nice. About not leveling Yula. Am I getting Yula shamed? Oh my goodness. I guess this, this is the vengeance. This is the vengeance she talks about. Chat is yelling at me for not leveling her. But... It was basically some beans, ground beef, spicy sauce, and very, very silky tofu. It's so good. You can get mixes to make it yourself. It's actually pretty easy to make. The stuff I made myself once with the mix was not as good as the stuff I got from a restaurant, but it was still very, very nice. What I will say is, is that it's not a very vegetable-heavy dish, so it might be nice to have something on the side, and also probably some white rice on the side is a bit of a palate cleanser and a bit of added starch. Because it's basically just protein and a bunch of spice. It's still really, really tasty, but it's by no means a balanced meal. It is luxury food, without a doubt. I did not mean to use that burst, but it's a fun way to start with the last fight, at least. So let's go over here and will we get the fab proc? Yeah, we did, I think. Let's see. Three, four, and... Oh, the bounty has ended. Oh, they were calling it a bounty. Well, either way, we've... I think we've killed every single golem on the world map. We've at the very least killed every golem that the notebook will send us to. So they were not in here, and fighting that guy with... Oh, fighting that local legend with this team is not going to work. I need Dandro. Oh, I would say about two hours left, give or take. Two hours, 15 minutes or so. But... Oh, like I said, we were talking about Sandrone before. And I think there's a good chance that Sandrone is basically a duo character with Elaine. The big thing is that I definitely think that Elaine is at least one of the parts of Sandrone. I'm particularly partial to the theory that Elaine is the big Ruin Guard like robot, especially since he did specifically work with Ruin Guards in the past. Also, one of the Marchasse pieces. I could just try reciting it from memory, but it'd also be nice to show it. Yeah, yeah, it would be. Well, the big thing is that... Let's go over to Marshall Say. Approach, Overture, Moment of Judgment, and Veteran's Visage. No, no, Forgotten Vessel, no. One of these has got to be. No, no, Recording. But who was Ingle, the masterpiece? Right, Guillotine, eat Guillotine. Your sister also served, yeah, Mary Ann, thinking machine during his time, Ada Sisterner's work. Because as such, Fonny was never published, retired to the workshop. Sun something had been built, a secret project that was completed. No one knows what it was. The big thing is that some people speculate that you can go over to the Bravice's secret lab over here in 
Wait, I need to actually zoom on in to be able to actually see the map layer. Yeah, no, Quisel's Clockwork Workshop, but Bravias is one of the guys there, I believe. The big thing is that there are notes here in an Arad, a Wiffy region, and the Institute region. There are a bunch of robots which are highly implied based on the papers who have been people who were basically somehow had their consciousness extracted from their body and put in a machine. It's a sort of neural net kind of thing. And the implication, a lot of people said, and I do agree, is that Elaine might have gone here, and that technology could have been a result of his efforts to transfer his own mind into a ruined golem to presumably stay alive and keep looking for his sister, and that Sandrone is... It would be interesting if Sandrone was already the real Marianne, but I think it's actually more likely that he's basically a kind of substitute. She's kind of a substitute. Maybe in a kind of German and the plain doll way from Bloodborne. And just as sort of sad and tragic. But given that Mary Ann or some semblance of her is explicitly still alive in that sort of oceaned form confined with Lyris, I think there is also a possibility that Sandrone's plot is basically when they become playable. Somehow they reunite with the ocean and Mary Ann and... Maybe, depending on how they want to run Sandrone, maybe convincing her to inhabit the robotic body made for her for, I know, additional strength on her travels, and then either she joins the Fatui or maybe Elaine leaves and goes with her. Given that, you know, Scaramouche left the Fatui before becoming playable, I think it's very, very possible that things work similar for Sandrone. As in... Winnie, Lynette, and... Winnie, Lynette, and Fremenet. Well, the big thing is, is that we've gotten increasingly friendly with the various Harbingers. Wait, what do you mean by... Oh, well, they're all gone, though. That the only ones we really saw were... <sighs> Jacob and Renee. Well, I think... Well, Caterpillar's story is probably not done, but the big thing about it is that I don't think we're going to have an, ant an antagonistic relationship with Sandrone, because at the end of Questioning Melusine and Answering Machine, the one quest with, you know, Agent Talishard and all that was released in 4.2, Sandrone basically said, oh yeah, that guy who tried to kill you, oh, I cut out his tongue. So it's a bit disproportionate for sure, but Sandrone then explicitly says, Oh yes, I would like a collaborative relationship with you. I don't think... Yeah, I don't think that... If we end up fighting Sandrone, which is very, very possible, I don't think it'll be on hostile terms. I think it'll be kind of like Arlecchino in that. Or at least not in the sense of... A fight during an Archon quest or something. Because the fight with Arlecchino was still somewhat hostile, but it's not as if... She was really intending to kill us. She was... Effectively, based on what happened afterwards, I would say it's more as if she was basically, you know, testing our resolve. That she knew for a fact that we and Lydia and Enfram, they could literally never, ever hope to beat her. But it was the importance of standing up to her. I guess the big question is, is... And people have joked about this. That if Arlequina was only the fourth... And presumably Columbina slash... Co that Columbina, Dottori, and Capitano are going to be, you know, the top three. Which the order of voice lines does seem to suggest. Also, there was also a leaked lineup of, of all of the Harbingers, sort of presumably in order. And the big thing is whether Piero is number zero or number one. I think most things do point in being number zero. Yeah, you go over here and... They're all in order. Zero, one, two, three, five, six, seven, no Scaramouche, nine, skipping ten, and then eleven. The big mystery is just the fact that the tenth seed of Piro Zero would have always been absent. And a lot of people say it's probably either Dioc or Dioc's dad. I think that's legitimate. The big thing is, is that, and I never even noticed it, but... During the Windbloom's Breath event last year, 
during this sort of Pac-Man minigame, you go in, and you have to spend a few few seconds waiting for no real reason. It's not like it needs to load. With a little table with a very unique looking cup, which later shows on in a cutscene as a cup related to the witches. And I think it also shows up in Dawn Winery. Either, either way, it shows up again in the Fontaine arc on Quest is the cup that talks to you at the very end. And a lot of people say that it I don't remember whether it specifically shows up in Dawn Wine or if it's just the design, but the cutscene says it talks about a witch who did not like her husband and I think killed her, killed him or something, which presumably means that if if Deluxe's mom is the witch, then she might have had something to do somehow with Crepus's death. I would not think so. Because Crepus is the one we see use the delusion. I think it's it's still possible. Because maybe he could have gotten the delusion from her. And it would be interesting to have a character who's presumably both a harbinger and a member of the Hexen Circle. Or, you know, the Circle of Witches in the original J Chinese and Japanese translation. But I also think that... There's, there's a sense in which going through multiple categories can be a bit of an overload, if you catch my drift. It can lead to characters with incoherent plot lines and designs and attributes. That said, given that Gold is both one of the sinners, one of the five sinners along with Verifolnir, and then two who we know nothing about, and then... Surtologi, Skirk's master, the quote-unquote knight of extreme evil in the Chinese and Japanese, even though he's just referred to as the foul in the English as in foul legacy. So we can get that now to 90. Okay, cool. I'm probably not going to be using this much for anybody, but if it works, it works. Yeah, given that gold is both one of the five sinners and presumably connected to the Abyss Order in at least some capacity, though that said... We know that Verfolnir inspired Quothar Alberic to make the Abyss Order. We don't know how much he's involved with the Abyss Order. But we do know, though, and as such, we also don't know if Skirk and Sertologi and Gold are involved as well. But we, we do know that Skirk is in the Abyss, more or less, and that Gold has made Abyssal creatures, but their connections to the Abyss Order are a lot less elaborated upon. Those would be far more in the realms of educated guess than any kind of actual surety. Okay. The question is... Oh, right, right. Chlorine needs a bit more in the way of... The crystals. So I think this would be a good time to go back and, for old time's sake, beat up a bunch of the underwater local legends in order to get more Fontamere Aberrant Crystals. Fair enough. If, in that case, I think I might use this time for a brief bath, brief bathroom break, so I'll be right back, too. Enjoy your food. What is it?
Hope his rule? Is that gonna be a new kind of hill troll enemy and not long? Who knows, really? Okay, I'm, I'm back and I'm alive. Thank you, thank you. So it's time to go on my little hunting trip for crystals for Corinda. Well, I mean, yeah, exactly, because you can't talk about weeks. Pun intended, I guess. Okay, cool. So we can open things back up. Oh, also, I gotta do my bounties and requests. Okay. So no yo. So I guess the big thing is, right, right, one thing I should be doing is farming more. I need to get more experience books for Sigwin when she comes out, also for Emily next version. So right, you need about 420 or so, and a red book is worth one-fourth as much as a purple one. So I've effectively got 296 right now, which isn't bad, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, the big thing for me is... Oh, and you might find this funny that I actually, I actually was looking at a bit of a couple of weeks. Understandable. Oh, oh, how did how did being venti go for you? Did it work? Did people like it? I hope. But as I was saying, are you crocheting more cosplay now? But I was looking at stuff and people were talking about so people were talking about you know the idea of you know what the quote unquote you know character gender ratios are going to be like in Notlan. People were saying, you know, Inazuma was mostly women, then Samara was a bunch of guys, and then Fontaine had some guys at the start, and then it was mostly women again, so... What do you mean, absolutely impossible to recognize, or...? Like I've said before... Well, I... I guess if you're thinking about things like maybe Capitone and Varka coming out, maybe that could make some difference. Oh, but we don't have... Oh, uh, that's right. We don't have Skyward Alice or Dodoko on you. It's just... Widsith. I'm an idiot. Okay, cool. So let's just blow this up. And cool. Three, one, two, three, and... Oh, uh, but not having any kind of... Oh, and it's not even making overlords happen? That's interesting. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. Mm hmm Just reproducing Ace, actually. Through budding. Parthenogenesis. Okay. Yeah, but the big thing is that it was very, very funny, because people were talking... To, people were talking about the whole thing, and someone said, Oh, yeah, but it's always been, you know, all women, right? And then someone went and talked about, Well, Samara was mostly guys, but they introduced it by saying... They quoted Dark Souls 3. They said, Ignorant slaves, how quickly you forget. Which is the first line that, that Consumed King Osiris says when you encounter him. I was just, oh my goodness, the brain rot, the brain worms are spreading. You know, you do one thing, you do, you play one Dark Souls game, and you keep recognizing just things quoted again and again and again. Oh, oh. I'm sorry you couldn't be there on... Sorry you couldn't be there a couple of days ago, Madame Italian, because... For the very first time, a FromSoft game had an emotional enough storyline to make me cry. And I'm sorry you missed that. And... cool. One, two, three, and... One, two, three. Oh, no, scrap, but... Right, the additional damage is really, really good and strong, but... Can we... Mm-hmm. Alright. Let's just put you down, and we're almost there. Oh, but, mm, right, 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 we gotta shield that, and, one, two, three, and, one, two, three, one, two, three, yeah, and, to make a bad story worse, I'm having trouble uploading the VOD, because it's a little over 12 hours, and I took a little break that I can get out to get right under 12 hours, because 12 hours is the maximum for a YouTube upload, the issue is, is that, I don't have enough space in my hard drive right now to actually complete condensing it a little because I need to have basically both the original version and the slightly condensed, slightly condensed version on there at the same time. It's so long that's just not enough. Sorry? It's on Twitch and it will get on YouTube eventually. One of these days. But it... Uh, I figured you were, don't worry. Is that Sekiro is just a lot more 
plot and character heavy than other Souls games. Because since it takes place in, you know, Japan basically, they have to focus a lot more on characterization to make things interesting as opposed to just the lore of the setting, which gives it a very different feel. And I still do think the setting could warrant a bit more explanation. I mean, exploration is in the sense of I would like to see more of it, and there are still a few. Maybe not mysteries, but things that would be nice to actually see in person. But, where is the underwater? Should be over. Wait, where was, was it either here or it was down the other way? But the big thing is that, honestly, a lot of it comes from the fact that Sekiro is not a nameless or silent protagonist. He has a defined character, defined, back, defined background, defined lines. He talks decently. He's relatively quiet, but he does say things. He does have a character to him. It's somewhat minimal, but he does respond to things. And it does make things different, and I think a little bit better. Okay, Lynette and Fremenet need to be go, go on here to complete my underwater exploration team. Let's see about that. And right, you're right here. I do have a few Lynette cons, which is nice. Big thing to me is... Should be where one of those local legends is. That a lot of the boss characters explicitly have connections to each other. And that's true of a lot of other Souls games too, but the difference is that since they talk a lot more, you gain a lot more sense of personality on them. And it... In particular, the game has a fun mechanic where you can get these... Basically these treasure items that are just... They're just drinks. They're literally just alcohol. And the entire reason you want to get them is not to drink them yourself, because you can't, but... You can give them to certain relevant NPCs in order to... Get some special dialogue from them talking about their own backstories and a bit of the plot bit more about this sort of fantasy Japan setting. And what's interesting is that, again, that a lot of characters are explicitly former or current friends of each other. At the very least, the big thing is that Shinobi Owl, who is a boss, you know, the evil foster father of Sekiro, was originally fought, originally fought alongside Ishin and everyone else with, for Ashina. You know, to take it from the central Japanese government, and it really just, you know, some kind of prequel game, or prequel something, that showed off what it was like when they were all cooperating as friends. You know, Owl, our mentor, Lady Butterfly, who in Japanese is actually known as... How did I miss this? What? Okay, free Mora. Who is not anything like... Ocho Gozen, which would be something more like, you know, Lady Butterfly, she's... Maboroshi Ocho, or Phantom Butterfly. They changed her name in translation, presumably, so, it, I don't know. Apply more to people's expectations, I guess. It is very, very interesting. Sekiro came out in 2019, and... Inazuma characters started coming out in... 2021, I believe, or maybe 20, 2021, yeah, and, but Sekiro still does name order in the English way, so to speak, not the Japanese way, yeah, it is, and I think maybe they didn't want that, I do try to blame a lot of the weird sort of translation quirks and inconsistencies in Sekiro, frankly, on Activision, who published it. Now, to be fair, I don't know how much influence they might have had over the nature of the localization. Okay, so the big... It was Dobharku. And we had Fading Veteran over there. Should be Dobharku somewhere over here. But yeah, so... Ishin, who is... the final boss of literally any ending in one of various forms, and... was originally an ally of... The Shinobi Owl, who fought with him to take the Ashina clan, the land of the Ashina, or to, again, quote-unquote, free it from Japanese central control. Okay, and actually, he would be over here, right? Kind of caught ourselves up, but... Also Lady Butterfly, because Lady Butterfly and Owl were allies, but also 
The sculptor, who was originally an axe-wielding ninja known as the Orangutan. Some of him are- Oh, wait, what? I didn't see this part. Oh, Berry Puff is over here. Hi. Hello. I never saw the end of this. Oh, wow. Hello there. I'm finding all sorts of things. Blah, blah, long time no see. He's such a buddy now. Gaze to the ocean, no need at all. The somersault. That worked. And... Have a wonderful time. Okay. Blah, blah. Okay, cool. Welcome back! I just found out that there was another little conclusion to the Berry Puff quest that I had not seen before. Which is interesting. The big thing is that I stopped after getting the achievement, so I didn't see that originally. Yeah, yeah. That surprised me, too, because the wiki, I don't think the wiki said anything about that, and, you know, I'm an inveterate wiki reader. But yeah, like I was saying, Ishin Owl, the sculptor who, again, was a ninja known as Orangutan, is when we get the axe that allows us to make the axe prosthetic tool, he doesn't comment on it, but it explicitly says that it was it was originally... Great sea, repeller of the Great Sea Horse, defender of countless blubber beasts. Says that it was lost along with the left arm of its original wielder, which does seem to suggest that. Okay, and which way is. Okay, there we go. We were able to track you decently with, your pa with the pathway made by your shots. But as I was. Okay, we should dodge out of the way of that and press the wrong thing. But as I was saying. It's stated in some of the dialogue you get when you give Ishin drinks that the sculptor was originally going to turn into a Shura, or an o as in, an, you know, kind of an Oni type creature, in that he was only stopped by Ishin taking away his ability to kill by severing his left arm, and therefore his ability to fight. But, so that guy, Orangutan, Lady Butterfly, along with Ishin, and probably. Based on the dialogue. Also, Gyobu, the first boss, this horseman, spearman guy. And where are you now? I, ooh, I am in a bad state. Do not kill Nubia, please. Uh, if we... It's so hard to find them sometimes. Well, that did kill. Good. We need to get some healing first. But then also, so Gyobu, Butterfly Owl, Ishin, and the Sculptor, and then also... Dogat, the doctor, who was Emma's foster father. You, know, Emma, are helper for most of the game. Ishin's doctor, and also... The guy who originally made the prosthetic, the sculptor, and then we use. The sculptor used, which he passes on to us to use. We're all originally allies in freeing Ashina. Which does feel to me like it would be really, really great. Bait, I suppose. For an eventual... I don't know, a second or prequel or sequel or, or something like that. Well, a prequel for that. Because a lot of people think, you know, the Divine Dragon, which in the best ending, arguably, we send back to China or Korea. It's not entirely clear. Because the Japanese dragon, or Ryu, is based off the Chinese dragon, or Long. Which... It would be. I'm not sure it happened, though, because we didn't even get actual story DLC. Got DLC that added character outfits and rematches against bosses, some buffed up as well. But we did not get DLC with actual real story content. And that does... And people have said that we might get more Sekiro eventually just because the combat system is so unique and so praised. But at the very same time, Armored Core 6, which I also do want to play eventually, is also effectively a... It has a very, very similar combat system to Sekiro, actually, which... Nice, and... Cool, and... Oh, did we... Interesting. Thanks. Take that out, and will you... I think this guy actually got easier, that they... No, now you have your shield, so that means... We can... Oh, no, we needed to get farther away. We were too close for that to work. Come on. And break that shield, thankfully. Do you want to try actually doing the back and forth with the shield? And then you spin at me and... That did not work at all. Come on, come on. It's a fun one. It's actually... It's very much like... A recurring type of fight in Zelda. And there we go. And we can break that and... 
One more time. Take that on you and break the shield, and... Oh, so breaking the shield is also a completely instant kill. I think the wiki said something about that, but it's not as if I... I read stuff about quests. I don't read stuff about fighting specific enemies most of the time, unless they're those really annoying guys from really annoying abyss bosses. But as I was saying, the divine dragon which we fight, you saw me get up to its entrance, but not actually fight it. It's actually known as the Sakura dragon in the original Japanese, but it... The concept of Japanese dragons ultimately originates from Chinese dragons, but the dragon wields, and it's effectively the game's version of the Moonlight Greatsword too, which I also find interesting, wields a seven-branched sword, which is a Japanese treasure that originates from Korea. Seven branch swords came from Korea and were given as diplomatic gifts to Japanese royals. So that's where the, that idea came from. So there are aspects of the Sakura Dragon tying it to both China and Korea. So if we did end up getting a prequel, I guess the question is, would it be China? Would it be Korea? Would it be both? I don't know. Frankly, I think that it would probably end up being China. If only because the Chinese market is almost certainly a lot bigger than the Korean one would be. For a number of reasons, you know, one of them being just there are more people in China, and another reason being there's a bit more enmity, quite frankly. For a number of reasons, I would say, between sort of... Until relatively recently, you weren't even allowed to have media in the Japanese language sold in Korea because of old grudges related to, you know, you know, killing each other in war, but basically there's still a bit of controversy, controversy in particular. I remember hearing that when certain, it wouldn't be, would it be Mon, yeah, I think it would be Manhua, right? Because it's Manhua in the equivalent of manga in Korea is Manhua, I believe, and I believe in China it's Donghua. I might be getting that wrong. But the big thing is that when there are anime adaptations by Japanese studios of Korean Manhua, oftentimes they will actually change the names of characters, or at least they often would before, change the names of characters to be more like Japanese names. And if I recall correctly, there is a manhwa, well, specifically a web, Korean webcomic called Solo Leveling, which you might have heard of, that I know it's getting an adaptation, an anime adaptation, that some people are pretty excited for. But the big thing about it is that, from if I recall correctly, they aren't changing the names to be Japanese names, and there are a lot of people who are very happy about that. Makes sense. But the big thing is... Sekiro's sequel could go a number of places, but the big thing about it is that to make a sequel, they would have to explicitly canonize one of the endings. And I'm not sure that they would really want to do that for a number of reasons. Because it always does feel a bit sour for people to have basically say, oh, you know, your favorite ending, that's not the right one, quote unquote. And okay, there's supposed to be the... Mini bosses around here. Okay, they're right here. They weren't around the tower. Usually they're a bit closer to the tower. Okay, cool. What's very interesting is that if you can manage to get one loaded in at once, you can see a subtitle on them that normally you really can't. And it says, Life form evolved of the Fontenaire, as in the Sea of Fontaine, the Primordial Sea. I really do enjoy how gimmicky these bosses are. I like that there's some local legends who are kind of just gimmicks you engage with, and some of them they're just you know, very difficult fights with a lot of HP and a lot of attack power. Especially since it works very well with this sort of exploration gimmick approach that they did to making the aberrant abilities. I do feel kind of sad that they didn't add other aberrant abilities. I feel like when we eventually get Mount Asus, they might add more aberrant abilities there. Maybe. Especially since, uh, in Furina's kit, her three offensive summons are an octopus, 
a crab and a seahorse. And there is no seahorse aberrant ability we can use. There are seahorse enemies, and there are crab and octopus abilities we can use. There's nothing for the seahorse. The fact that we can get, you know, a xenochromatic colored seahorse is by Furina's kit makes me think that we might get a an aberrant of that type eventually. At least I hope so. And they drop a decent amount. I think they actually drop more than the others, because out of the underwater ones, I would say they're probably the most troublesome to deal with. Yeah, yeah. But at the very same time, it it might be a bit difficult to figure out in a reason for them to exist, so to speak, in the sense that a lot of them are various kinds of projectiles, or at very least you have... So they're over here now. Cortana and Morglings. So Cortana is the sort of Tristan from Arthurian legend, and I believe that Murgles is the spear of a guy from one of the bad guys from the matter of France. No, that would be Balt Malta. Murgles death. Oh, a okay, he is a villain from Song of Roland, but he it's a sort of. Ganelon, an evil French guy. No comment. And but... The big thing is that... What we see is... They shoot these projectiles. And... What is interesting is that... The crab's power when... The crab and the octopus powers that Farina uses are... Really nothing like how the enemies fight or the abilities are, but the actual xenochromatic abilities tend to be very, very similar to how the actual enemies themselves fight. Because the octopus fights with a big sort of tentacle beam, which is what we use when we get the ability. The These guys shoot blades, which the Mandarin Warrior ability lets us do, and the jellyfish is pretty similar in that sense, and so is... Actually, the crab is actually the crab is nothing like that, but the big spin attack that they do is kind of similar to Furina's, maybe. Okay, thanks. What are you gonna eat? Hope you eat something good. Oh, coffee. What do you have to eat? Was it good? Okay, and so the only remaining aberrants are going to be over here in Help Claire, and Help Claire is. In universe, it's the name of. It's another name for Splendor of Tranquil Waters, which is Furina's sword, and the one originally used by Arrhenius. Oh, nice! What kind of meat? Oh, ricotta, fair. Enjoy your ricotta. Also, the name of the sword of. I mean, basically, well, basically in French, it means high and clear, but. In. It was the sword of Olivier de Vienne in. Also in the Song of Roland. Pure water tide it came. The big thing is, is that I like how... I, li I like both how the original three kinds of local legend aberrants use the same ability that their smaller versions gave. But I also like how the two later ones use entirely different abilities. It is also very funny how trivial this one is. It's also very funny how frankly the most threatening one is the Blubber Beast. Because the Blubber Beast, you have to stun it while it's attacking you. And you don't really have a way to negate its attacks like you do with the others. Even dodging it isn't all that effective because you have to stay still in order to actually use the Blubber Beast waves that you need in order to make things, make it not be invisible anymore. I remember some years ago, I had... Oh yeah, right, that's right. That one was a lot of fun. I actually, right before 4.2 came out, I actually rushed basically beating Elden Ring, which is a big game, but you can beat it very, very quickly if you try to. If you just go straight to the next objective and know how to fight the bosses. Because... Narcissus and Kreutz, or the Hydro Tulpa, which was the basis for the Narcissus and Kreutz boss, has a few attacks that are a bit similar to Morgoth, 
who is one of the bosses in Elden Ring. One of the more important ones, too, and there were some people suggesting similarities between the Narwhal and the final boss of Elden Ring, which I think were overstated. That said, the arena of Narciss and Kreutz is actually very, very similar to the arena of the final boss in Elden Ring in a number of ways. So is the Narwhals, but it's actually a bit less so. The big thing is that I wanted to see the original versions before I engaged with things that pay tribute to them. I also... What's interesting about Arlecchino is you may or may not know this, but in some leaked design documents, they showed off some inspirations for Arlecchino's design, and very specifically, two of the extra DLC bosses... It's funny that both of them were DLC bosses, which among other things, means that they were among the more difficult bosses in the game, and as someone who fought them, I would agree. Remorian, phonography, single digits, so music, and then... Broken script, spirit and will, spirit and height, memory which is still in persona, the four orthans we saw, true will. Chemical marriage, that's a reference to Rosicrucianism. Okay, saw that already. But big thing is that down here, I do find it interesting that... Before you sink the tower, as you may or may not know, the jellyfish is just outside at the very bottom of the area, but before that you... Oh, never mind, I got hit. It's too close. But it becomes a bit harder to reach once you do this, because you have to actually go inside the tower in order to reach it. But the big thing to me is... In the design documents, they had pictures of Lady Maria who is one of the DLC bosses in Bloodborne as her primary inspiration, and in terms of appearance, I would probably agree. But, given that she uses a scythe, she's actually pretty similar to another boss from Dark Souls 3, Sister Frida. And there we go. So sometimes that attack is actually good for us. Okay. What's very, very interesting is that the big weeping spin and dive attack that she does with her scythe that Orlikino does is very similar to one of Sister Frida's attacks that she uses in her boss fight at the end of the first DLC of Dark Souls 3, but at the very same time, that attack is in and of itself also very, very similar to an attack that Lady Maria uses. And, you know, Lady Sister Frida is generally considered to basically be a Lady Maria clone or character inspired by Lady Maria. So it's kind of interesting that the attack is more similar to Frida's version, but it ultimately originates from an attack that Lady Maria does. And Orlikino is has an appearance closer to Lady Maria, but a fighting style that in general, because she uses a scythe, Lady Maria uses a sort of double-bladed sword that can be split off into a katana, a katana, and a wakizashi, a longer sword and a shorter sword. But Frida just uses, uses a scythe, and in her second, in the third phase of her fight, she uses two scythes at once, if I recall correctly. She does not do during the first part. Walk with the Brilliant, Garden of Paradise, and we can just knock you out while you have your purple aura to negate that. But as I was saying, and boom, boom, nice. I should have dropped that down by me immediately, and set the way those. They oh, actually they have pretty strong homing. Okay, did not see that coming. All right, it's been a while since I fought this guy, and boom. Okay. Oh, we still got hit. Huh. I. It has been a while since I fought this sea angel, but again, I do like how you use. A different ability to fight it. Frankly, I should see briefly how that attack actually works. Hmm, never mind. And, oh, come on, we can dive it. Okay, dodge out of the way. I'm just doing all of the underwater local legends because I need to fight. Well, I need a few more of the crystals in order to get Corrin all the way. To okay, so they just track on you. They don't home in, though. And there we are. Because Clara needs these crystals in order to level up her skills. And I had her at 888 and got knocked off, well, partially by Mora, but not anymore. But also by not having enough of the crystals, because a lot of characters need them. 
Remine needs them, Navia needs them, and Nuvia needed them. And then I think that is with the addition of Corinne, and that's about it as far as I can remember. This Chiora used Spectre materials, which was very, very fronny, frankly. I do find it interesting that Rift Hounds, well, Spectres especially, though Spectres are elemental life forms and theoretically should be able to appear anywhere. They mostly just appear in Inazuma, though to be fair, Inazuma probably is still considered the hardest region. Because it is, and they could afford to do that in part because it is the only region that is still gated behind some degree of story and adventure rank progress. I really do miss how puzzling Inazuma exploration was at times. The block puzzles and a lot of the world quests and the literal magic square puzzle over on Matatsumi over here. They were not afraid to make you have to think a little. And while I do understand why it might have made people a little annoyed and eaten into the sort of casual reputation of the game, I still do miss it a little because... In the end, if people had a problem with it, they still could have looked it up on a wiki. It was never some sort of impossible roadblock, it never had any kind of time restriction that would have made a wiki impossible to do. One thing I do find very funny, actually, is that the very first Inazuma event, Thunder Sojourn, was one of the first flagship events I did. First one I did was Golden Apple. You had to go to the area, to the cave between these little water inlets in Kujo, water outlets in Kujo Encampment. But the issue is that you needed Electro on you in order to activate the crystals. You had to use yourself as a link, which normally meant that unless if you broke the Electro Crystal nearby, which I originally did, you could normally find yourself kind of SOL. But what's really funny is that they give you Beto for free in that event. And I realized that I could use the fact that Beto had briefly had self Electro application on E skill to bridge the gap and open up the gate. It was really, really amusing, actually. I wonder if it's still open. Or if it closed itself automatically. It's been a while since I did any real meaningful Inazuma exploration, so... Because I've had it all cleared for so, so long. Frank, well, I guess the big question in VFE Sandrone is... When Sandrone pretty much inevitably becomes playable... What kind of... What kind of weapon would she end up using? Yeah, the big thing is, there was a gate over here that I had to open. And these, those crystals are already still activated, but I had to use myself. As a conducting circuit, basically. It was fun. By the way, right now, the only thing left would be using... A little bit more resin, so I won't be able to do that while on stream, so... I guess in that case... Before focusing on anything else like TCG... Oh, right, I also need to do my bounties and requests. I could try doing a bit more of... Ugh, clearing out teapot dialogue and Prima Gems. Because while I will have enough, as long as I use my Star Glitter, to literally get every single... Well, to get Sig 1, even if I literally have to go all the way to Hard Pity twice... Minogius? I... I wouldn't believe that, because all the Aksha are supposed to be dead. I think, if there are any- if you believe any speculation about who- any conjecture about Capitano being somebody we've seen before in lore, I think Capitano being the Bloodstained Knight would be the best possibility. Especially since he does, in the Midsummer Night Lazo trailer we see, specifically talk about honoring Senor's sacrifice, which beyond him just having a strong sense of honor, I think could tie into the fact that the Bloodstained Knight's mentor was Roland, who was Senor's lover in life when she was Rosalind. I think that's a decent sign. And the big thing I really like about Capitano, frankly, is that his design, arguably, almost certainly, is at least slightly based off of 
the Fume Knight, who is a very fun, very challenging DLC boss from Dark Souls 2. And one of the reasons I really like that comparison is that in the description of Favonius Greatsword, it's mentioned that Favonius Blade work, in its original form used by Arundelin, had a style of... Okay, let me see. Right over here, right over here. Ceremonial and Favonius Blade work single-handed. The original form was wielding a longsword and a greatsword together, growing extraordinary strength, which is very, very specifically in Dark Souls 2, how the Fume Knight fights you. He uses a longsword in his left hand and a... I think, well, he uses a longsword in one hand and a, an ultra greatsword is in a greatsword even bigger than a normal greatsword in his right. It's very, very funny that in Phase 2, when he takes you more seriously, he gets stronger by tossing away the longsword and just using the greatsword two-handed, but it's neither here nor there. The big thing is, is that Capitan looks a bit like a Fume Knight. Like the Fume Knight and the Bloodstained Knight would be connected to Mondstadt and therefore to... Arundelin, Rostam, Roland, basically just people who would use the style or know of it. So I think it's very, very possible that Capitano might have a style like that, be a sword character with an extra greatsword in his animations, or a greatsword character with a sword, vice versa. Because that's basically how they did it with Alhytham. They gave him that auxiliary dagger that he wielded to, during, during his dual-wielding animations, but at the very, very same time, that would take a lot of mechanical changes to the game. I think it would be really, really cool if Capitano did not have an element at all. Especially since it's stated that he is the strongest pure human into that. For him to not have a vision and to actually be able to equip two weapons at once and therefore just pump his base attack up to really, really high levels. Because on one hand, he could do it where, okay, maybe... They could vary it so that individual hits with the greatsword and longsword to use the respective values of each weapon. And then maybe, I don't know, substats for each weapon would only apply to those hits. So for example, if you have black sword with crit rate and black cliff, great, black cliff slasher with crit damage, only the sword attacks would have increased crit rate and only the greatsword attacks would have increased crit damage. But I think that would not be strong enough just to find not having an element. I think they would have to do it where he gets the base attack from both weapons, if he could equip both two weapons, and the substat bonuses from both. And that would lead to some really, really interesting combinations in terms of figuring out what his best set was. But it was... What was Encore and? Big thing is, is, I still don't think that would happen. They would have to fundamentally change how their characters work. And they have done a bunch of improvements to their code base, but it would still be a lot to make a character with no element, literally no element. Actually, no element wouldn't be a huge problem, but just, I think that equipping two weapons at once could easily cause a lot of problems code-wise. Okay, so no Corrid on you. It's kind of sad. Butter from Muirin and Salt and the Killing Ruin Drakes. Either way, I am... Yeah, exa that's exactly right. I literally forgot about that. And also, no element during the Crux Clash, which means that it's a second opportunity to actually upgrade Traveler's normal attack in non-element form. But that is big, because I was thinking, you know, it wouldn't be hard for them to add a no element element option for characters, but it is literally already in the game, so that wouldn't be hard at all. But the big question is, if he were able to actually equip two weapons at once, I feel like that would cause some... That would require some changes in the way the game handles character data. So, I guess it's possible, but so is Pig's Flying. But I do think that it would be the most interesting thing to do with him. That said, I think we might have talked about this before, that... The main thing standing in the way of physical characters being good is just... It's all about multipliers. They would have to change significantly how... Maybe they would have to buff Superconduct specifically, but... The only time they ever changed a pre-existing reaction was when they nerfed Burning's Pyro Application Rate. 
between 2.8 and 3.0, but that was because it went from being an environmental and enemy-only reaction to one that player could actually use. And it would be way too good. It would... Old-style burning, if we could actually proc it, would probably enable actual forward vaporize teams, which could become pretty ridiculous. It would probably make Tartaglia the best character in the game. Maybe at least in single target situations, so that you wouldn't overload your Hydra application and still be able to reliably vaporize all parts of your burst or something. But burning before it was actually player available in 3.0, before we actually got Dendro characters, applied a truly crazy amount of fire. Well, with Capitano, it wouldn't work all that much if it was just doubling the weapon. Because as, as I was saying, ideally I think he would have... Runedrake should be over here. A great sword and a long sword, which means... So, then it would be like Shiori, who also herself is like Alhaitham. It is funny that we got Dendro Cutching and Geo Cutching. And... The two non-cutching cutchings are more like each other in the sense that both of them are dual wielders with one actual sword and one auxiliary dagger weapon and they just have basic. Then either of them are, you know, like cutching herself. You know, maybe they could have given cutching another weapon too. Maybe. I don't know. And over there and... She's so good with Dendro. I would say that Alhaitha might still be better, but... She honestly needs a bit less setup. Hmm. And she she is really mobile too and heals herself, which means she works a bit better with Fiorina, I would say. Maybe. Either way, for this one, we need to switch to... Oh, I can see my funny Rithesley reverse melt team. Oh, but actually, in theory, I might be better off with well, it'd be Shenha and... How would I be able to... Hmm. Maybe if I put in Zhongling instead of... I mean, Nahida instead of Zhongling, it would actually work better. I could do a Burn Melt. Maybe. But... This is basically the one thing guaranteed... Um, the one thing justifying the fact that I have Shenha. <laughs> it's the only team I've actually been able to make Shenha work on. Yeah. I th I do think that if they gave Capitano quote-unquote two weapons, it probably would be, like you said. Like Chori and Alhaitham, where they just give him a weapon in his animations that's not actually something he changes through equipment. But I do think it would be coolest if they did give some, like I said. Still probably not likely, though. It's tough. Mm -hmm. It's just... I think you might have heard this, but I was talking with some people about you know, what a you know, what the game could really do to change up and make combat more interesting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a bit perverse, but yeah. Well, especially if they're on field, because well, the thing about All Hythen is that Black Sword actually looked pretty good on him. Honestly, about as good as Light of Fuller Incision to me. But Wolf Fang simply does not match his color scheme. Because sort of the black and red versus white and green. Black and red black sword versus white and green auxiliary dagger is a very, very nice, actually, color contrast. But Wolf Fang simply does not look good on him in the slightest. There's no way around that. Oh, but Shenha might have issues on this team. Because if I'm running Zhongwen with Burn Mount... Zhongling's also holding fat to help battery. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. And right, we want to use our burst right at the start to get rid of the node. Okay, cool. Hello there, hello. Do that way, and cool. Just take that out, and... that. Okay, that did work. Okay, cool. And burn, and take that down, and cool. One, two, three, four. Oh, the burn melt is actually really, really good. Wait, how did I... How did I die? Wait, what? Never mind. Rest in peace, I guess. 
Oh, the burning damage just... Oh, that's right, because burning damage... Since it was scaling off of EM, he was taking Nahida EM level burning damage. Oh, that's crazy. The team damage was really good, though. Shunha actually got her burst back, but... Poor Rithasli. I did not intend for him to get burned to death by Nahida. Big thing is, is that... Not to say too much about leaks, but... People are saying that Emily's kid is going to be really, really good for Rithesley Burn Melt Team Archetype. We'll see what happens. The big thing is that she shouldn't require going back on field to reapply Dendro. Which, in theory, well, but actually, unless you had Jongling, you wouldn't be able to get the burning going again. We'll see what happens. Either way, I will be rolling for Emily, and I hopefully should get her. We'll see what happens. Vulnerability to Dendro, and... I like it. I think... A lot of people have shown off... A lot of people have shown off various leaked possible Emily designs from before, and people have been... You know, because it's not a new character without people complaining about what could have been. Basically saying, oh, I liked the older possible designs better, and it's just... I was talking to somebody, and... Someone who I frankly deeply dislike, which is why I blocked them and don't talk to them anymore. But, and this was a recent development, but they were talking about, oh, you know, they made such a bad choice. And, you know, they probably only changed it because she looked too much like, that she didn't look like an, a Dandro character because she was purple. And I was just, you know, we've had, let me just look at all that. The only element where you really have all the characters looking like their element without exception, I would say, is probably Dendro. Everyone's got some green in their design. Well, actually, not Kaveh. We literally, yeah, we literally already have Kaveh. But then other elements, we, we've had Beto, who is... Does Beto even have any purple in her... Does not have purple in her design since the start of the game. You know, it probably was not at least entirely done. You know, I said maybe it was done because she looked a bit too much like Lisa. I guess that's kind of legitimate. Though, that was back when I still thought that Emily was using... Gonna use the tall woman model, but she actually uses the medium model. Big thing is that... There was there was a stupid argument where they were all, Oh, you know, Emily's new design looks so gratu... It's just so much more fan service and gratuitous because she has all those mommy eyes. And I was just... You know... The purple design that you like is a lot more gratuitous than the new one, by pretty much any metric. But it was a stupid argument. There's a reason I don't talk to that person anymore. But I... This was a few days ago, actually. They, they were just a random person in the server I was in. Small server with, you know, one person I know and then all of their friends. But it was just... Oh my goodness. It's just... It feels stupid getting into stupid arguments like this. But okay, so this is Pyro, which means I should... Actually, I could just put in the Arlequino team. It does not reflect well on me. Oh, well, I do like her design. I do find it interesting that she's a pull arm character. Definitely, at least in part, to compensate for the fact that we simply have not gotten a lot of pull arm characters this patch cycle. Could also use the Linny here, but... Use Linny a lot for other... Other bounties in the past, so I'll let the Arlequino team just do it. Yeah, yeah! I think, frankly, one argument you might have been able to make that n neither I nor my conversation partner did is that they might have changed it because the older ones got leaked. But I think the bigger one is often just, and a lot of people don't really keep this in mind, that even though they've gotten better at translating a lot of designs from the character release art that we see to actual in-game models, because... I think I've said this before, but just, you know, you look at Navia's hair design versus, say, Albedo or Diluc, and the concept is simply translated so much better. There's no way around that. But I think a lot of that also has to do with probably getting better at choosing 2D character designs that can better be translated into 3D models, even if their capacity has gotten better as well. That, quite frankly, a lot of it was probably just... She did not work as well in 3D as they expected or might have wanted, and they chose one that did work a bit better. 
Either way, it's just... More Dendro is always nice. I like Dendro as an element. But... I do find it very funny, though, that we're getting our first Fontaine Dendro before we're getting our first Monstat Dendro. Though, to be fair, it's not like they're really releasing a lot of Monstat characters around now. Two, three, and there we go. That was... And, of course, our Lakino is already a bit over to the offense department to compensate for the fact that she really, you know, she can't be externally healed during battle and that... I do have her signature 5-star weapon, which I don't for any other character, but just... The amount of damage that team can output is ridiculous. And frankly, the more ridiculous thing is that... This team still could not be... That... Super Boss event. It was just so whale tier, whale tier overtuned. It's kind of crazy. Sword wielding characters and... So we can just try Chlorine on this. And it's... I'm not precisely complaining. Because in as much as I may have a deep ethical distaste for this game's monetization model... The only reason it can keep up such high production values is that there are some people who choose to spend... Hundreds of times more than what other people spend on the game. You know, as in, people who spend on the game at all, which is already a subset of the game's player population. Without that, the game would not be able to, for better or worse, have... ...its appreciable production values. But that's not to say that the approach is without its downsides. Then we can put an official and finish up my request. We're at 76. You know, because the big thing is, is that the only thing I couldn't complete were the Platinum Medals, which is... ...basically a pure DPS check. If you beat the Super Bosses if you did that event on the hardest difficulty, with no benefits and a lot of buffs to them... ...you would be able to get all the rewards without even doing that, by just having only one buff for yourself active. You get the three-star gold medal, which is no additional reward for beating them with no buffs active and all their buffs active. But the platinum medal is that plus a 90 second time limit, and I was only able to do that for the super boss version of the Dendro Chicken. Is it just had really, really good interactions with the Arlequino team I was showing off before. But in the end, it's just I did not miss any meaningful rewards. I might have wished that I was able to clear it entirely, but it's not like I'm weaker. My account is not any weaker because of that. It's not like the study in potions event that was a little while ago, I mean a couple of years ago, that if you didn't have, if you didn't beat everything, you would miss out on a significant portion of the game's rewards. And a lot of them were really, really hard to get, even with decently built teams. It was way beyond my capacity as a player who'd been there for, you know, about a year, which still would have been about half of the total runtime of the game at that point, but still it did not feel good to not be able to beat that event. After having somewhat built my characters and made a ride a national team, which is still one of my better teams. But in the end, it's just... The, it was a study in potions. It's the event where Yingar and, and Timaeus first interact. You know, the the sus woman from the sus woman from Liwei and Albedo and Sucrose's friend. That's where they started shit baiting them. Because it was the first time they met up. But as I was saying, it was one of the first events they did where the gimmick was. You have to use teams with very, very different characters. That was one of the first times they did anything like that outside of Abyss. And it was simply very, very hard. That's really the long and short of it. The enemies were very, very strong and you just had to be able to deal with them somehow. And it was still enjoyable on what I could do, but it left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. That now they significantly changed it so that even though there are oftentimes, you know, extra very, very hard difficulty levels, they are almost always just that extra. That if you can't beat them, you can still get all of the meaningful rewards, not just in terms of premium gems, but even additional materials. I really did like last patch, how 
they had the super, super hard difficulty on the Rhythm Game event. And I went in hard. I actually... I got perfect full clears on all of those songs on One and Only King, which I had to do it on my phone. I actually had to remove the screen protector to do it because I didn't have precise enough input with a screen protector on. And it... I would not say it was worth it. I would not even say that I am glad that I did it. But it is something that I can now say that I have done. It's honestly one of the hardest sort of pure skill checks that the game has ever thrown at me. And it was a mini game totally unconnected from normal gameplay. Oh, it... I would say a couple of days. To be fair, I have done... Because that version of the Rhythm Game event had shown up a couple times before in the Ito Drumlong event and the last Wim Boom event we caught. But the hardest part about it was, frankly, finding a good calibration. Finding a good calibration, as in the delay between the note and the music. So I did that, it wasn't horrible. But there are a lot of really, really tricky segments in a lot of songs. In particular, well, including a lot of otherwise easy songs. Because the Linny song was really easy for most everything until the end. But then they just throw a big barrage of notes at the end. Which can totally screw you over. Also, the Furina one just had really, really weird rhythms. And it did not always feel like the chart always matched the song. But a lot of it is also just... That the rhythms were weird. And not really what you would always expect. It did give me a lot of more a lot of familiarity with characters' themes, which I did appreciate. Cause I love how Fiona's theme is just incredibly jazzy. I did a bit of jazz back when I was in high school so many years ago. I was a Tenor saxophone is who once played baritone saxophone for one song. It's always nice to see good jazz in games and elsewhere. I remember a few years ago, actually, if you're familiar with the game Kirby Superstar, I... Furinas is up there. I'm actually, I'm mostly familiar with the newer ones, because I only really started watching character shows relatively recently. One thing I really, really do like is how... Usually in the version themes... For that, for the version trailers, as you may or may have not have noticed... They usually work in... Some of the leap motifs from the character themes, if you check the character trailers. I feel like one of these days, it'd be cool to download all the version trailers and character trailers. And specifically point out the segments of the character trailers and therefore the themes that the version trailers are taking inspiration from. I'm not sure. Oh, and Shin Chao is already here. Okay, so where does he want to go? But the big thing about that is... Let me think. I really liked Ito's, especially since it had a really, really fun chart back in the first Inazuma Rhythm Game event. And same with Yoimiya's, that one was also pretty tough for me. I... Oh, I can't believe I forgot Zhongli's. Zhongli's will always be iconic, but I almost feel like I can't say it just because it's such a generic answer. But it is really good, and I love how much of a Chinese feel it has. Because... It's very, very interesting, because on one hand... I really like how unabashed Genshin is about showing off different facets of Chinese culture. Especially in how it added more areas to Liwei. It added more... parts of the Sinosphere, so to speak. You know, the Chinese cultural sphere. Because the Chasm has a bit of Mongolian influence. And Chen Yu Vale is a little bit Cantonese, in particular Gaming is inspired specifically by Cantonese culture. And, you know, of course, part of the reason they probably chose that specific pronunciation of the name was, you know, for 
the joke and maybe even the search engine optimization of you know how them literally be na being named gaming but <sighs> the mandarin reading of the characters in his name is more like jamming but the cantonese pronunciation is gaming so they use that for him to ref reflect at least in part you know the cantonese influence of the area which i do appreciate I think one of these days, I do want to go to a lot of Asian countries. Japan is on the list for, you know, obvious reasons, including that I've been trying, you know, vainly to learn the language via Duolingo for some years now, but it, China and India are also on the list just because the regional cuisines of the various areas are just very, very interesting. There's a guy on YouTube who does these sort of Anthony Bourdain-esque videos where he goes to obscure parts of the world and tries these crazy, crazy cuisines. And I saw... One of the videos I saw was a guy in... I think North India, where a lot of their cuisine revolves around insects, which, you know, on one hand you can say that's literally poverty food, but a lot of the best cuisines in the world originate as poverty food. Because when you don't have access to good ingredients, you have to compensate on seasoning and technique. Because, you know, when you can just get really high quality meat, high quality vegetables in and of themselves, they don't often need a lot of seasoning. But if you're using, I think refuse might be strong, but, you know, things that are dried out, surplus, sometimes even military supplies. Because if you're familiar with carbonara, Italian carbonara came about in the 20th century after World War I. It was basically a way to use the standard cheese and milk that would be given to Italians as supplies by American soldiers during the rebuilding of Western Europe. And today, it's a very, very respected dish, but it originated as poverty food precisely because the lackluster nature of the ingredients required refining of technique. But it was a very insect-heavy cuisine, that part of India from what I saw, and I've actually eaten bugs before and I actually enjoyed them decently. Some time ago, around nine months ago I'd say, a friend was staying over at my house as he was driving back up to college. And we went to a Mexican grocery store because he wanted us to cook some tamales. That was fun. It was very time-consuming, but it gave us food for weeks. But I saw these dried salted grasshoppers being sold and bought them on a whim. And I had them a bit later on. They were seasoned very, very interestingly. They had a bit of... would have been lime or citric acid, maybe both, but had a bit of acidity and was just... As you might expect, they were very, very crunchy. But, you know, it's it's cheap, it's cheap protein that's all around, you know. Save the earth and all. But, as I was saying, I like how much of Chinese culture and the Sinosphere in general is presented in this game. But at the very same time, I do also like that when the game first came out, they had Bonstat and Liyue. They were very, very clear at the beginning that you know, this was going to be a game where you were going to get to experience various kinds of represents representations of real real world cultures in a fantasy context and they had a decent balance of monstat characters and lila characters at the outset you know other people right now are you know they're getting into Wuthering waves and it seems interesting but you know beyond everything else i just don't have time to play it but one thing i will say with regards to it is that as of now from what i've seen the game only has their sort of sci-fi post-apocalyptic china influence region they still have some characters who are from what i presume to be the sort of america influence region but i feel as if the game would have a better presentation if it had at least two other regions i mean at least two regions and it wouldn't have to be a western one they could have chosen two eastern ones you know they could have had basically wuwa Samaru, and that could have been really cool and i would have respected that i would have respected them immensely for having you know, two regions that aren't even Western at all. And just going hard and being that confident in their presentation, but... The fact that it's one anything... You know, it doesn't matter what culture it is. The fact that it's supposed to be a game with 
And also the fact that it's going to have six regions instead of seven, too, with that. The thing that always keeps me coming back to this game, frankly, is just the lore, the world building, and the fantasy and f fantasy representations of other cultures. And, you know, I'm happy that other people are having fun with Wuwa, but there are reasons why I haven't switched. I might have mentioned this before, but I think a lot of it is also just... There's a lot of it, a lot about it to me, and that makes it seem like a very specifically male audience targeted game. Which, just from a streamer's perspective, and someone who has a relatively balanced audience, would probably be a worse decision strategically. That said, it's not like I care that much about numbers. Yeah, it has a lot of similar, similar to PGR, and a lot of people have said very specifically about PGR that just... The release of characters in general... The rate of release is very, very slow. And basically, the, the gender ratio is very, very skewed there. And because characters hardly come out in that game to begin with, it feels a lot worse. That I will not... I won't be shy about it. I, I've definitely, in terms of, you know, characters and games, you know, big cast of characters, generally... <laughs> I like characters who I can kind of project myself onto at least as much as characters who I just like the appearance and design of, and, you know, the fact that this game has a relatively balanced cast makes that decently good for me. You know, I won't deny being at least in small part a Skara King. No comment. But, uh, it also, like I said, I think prevents... Prevents a lot of the character designs from getting a bit too gratuitous, if you catch my drift. As you know, th there's a point where it just becomes... Sir? It makes you feel a little weird, you know? By the way, he's here. Hello, Shingcha. Very lively. Instruments is in clamor, common to the city. The street is most exquisite. Inspiration for my writing. And then, where are you going next? And get more talent books. And where's he gone now? He is presumably he went in the house. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, in the end, it's just there is nothing wrong with a game specifically targeting a male audience or specifically targeting a female audience, but they're not the kind of games that I specifically like. And I like this game because. It targets a balanced audience, and its designs, therefore, are... Characters and designs are therefore balanced. It's... Again, it's subjective. You know, I have friends who, like... I have friends who play Azure Lane. I have friends who play Ensemble Stars. Games that are, almost without exception, very oriented towards one kind of audience. But that's also why they don't interest me in the same kind of way. I think... <sighs> Also, I will cop to this. I'm also a big, for lack of a better term, kind of a head shipper. And even though there was a lot of discourse when Clorinda actually came out, and a lot of the details with her backstory with Navia were made concrete, and it's... Oh, not to wade too much into the waters of discourse, because discourse is the eighth deadly sin, as I like to say, but, you know, people are, you know, Rio Rind makes no sense, because, you know, Navi and Corrind have connections, Rithesli and Corrind interact once, maybe twice, it, because that was briefly a decently popular ship after, you know, the third and fourth Fontaine Archon quests, and I liked that a lot, you know, it was, you know, kind of Ito Sara Part 2, in the same way that, you know, Nui Furi is kind of Zongtao Part 2. But it was very much a sort of, you know, a lot of people saying, you know, this is a victory for progressives that, you know, you know, the, you know, this is an LGBT victory that, you know, Corin and Navi are almost definitely kissing, that their backstories were made basically for the sake of Yuri. And it's just, you know, maybe partially, but they're de the reason they did that is definitely not for the sake of making some sort of progressive move, at least not the original audience. It's so that, you know, people who really like, some like a Rethesley Nouviet pairing or the Corin Navia pairing don't get freaked out by the possibility of, you know, hat shipping. And it's really, really funny because the entire reason I'm big into that, frankly, is 
I used to be a very big Fate fan. I'm still a bit of a Fate fan. But not as much as I was before. But Fate Grand Order, despite being, you know, pretty much undeniably a game very overwhelmingly targeted to a male audience, even though they do throw a few well-needed but inadequate bones to their female audience every now and then, I have immense respect for female Fate fans. They, they, they are very resilient. But basically that... Due to the fact that it's sort of a compilation crossover game between a lot of the works by the original creator, there are a lot of characters who are rollable, playable, who have existing romantic relationships with various other characters and other works, and generally speaking, they try to respect that. Sometimes, and I find it very, very funny, that if they want to get around that, usually they do it by making the characters swingers. You know, like, you know, I love so-and-so, but no one said I can't love other people too. Which, for better or worse, is just amusing in that, in particular, in the second story arc, there was a story chapter based off of sort of a sort of alternate history science fiction China, where the first emperor became immortal and then became a giant supercomputer. It requires more explanation than I should probably give right now, but basically, two of the characters you can eventually roll are... Zhang Yu, a Chinese warlord who in this alternate story is basically a giant centaur-like robot. And Yu Meiren, who in history was his wife or his concubine. You know, his favorite non-wife woman. Ancient history is messy, but... And in this setting also she's an immortal vampire because... Well, they always gotta change something. But the big thing is just, you know, they are very explicitly still, you know, married and in love... But, you know, for people who play the game and find either character attractive, oh, well, also they're swingers. <laughs> so, it's just a very, very amusing choice to me. Smart, probably smart, though. But the big thing is just, it's very interesting because, like I said, despite the fact that, you know, Fate is, and Fate Grand Order especially probably, is a very male-oriented game and franchise, they still have a lot of, you know, frankly, headships. That's probably where I get it from, but it's just, you know, they, they did not make Corinne and Navia a pr almost canonical pairing for the sake of, you know, making some sort of daring political statement. It was done to, to, to appeal to their audience. And that's just, it is what it is. And, you know, it's, you know, quite frankly, I cannot think of Alhypham being anything but gay. Though Kav is probably bisexual. It's a weird talk to be on. But it's... I think a lot of people, and to be fair... Yeah, because Korn and Navi in the story quest is explicitly stated that they are deeply connected childhood friends. And before that, there was a bit of vagueness as to how much older Korn might have been than Navia. Because she was a champion duelist when Navi was young, but I guess it's just established that she really was, you know, a child prodigy who you know, killed Kalos when she was 12 or something. But the big thing is that these are details that they decide to appeal to a certain audience. They make these choices for reasons, and they're not the reasons that a lot of people on Twitter think they are. And again, it's just, you know, most of these people on Twitter are probably, you know, like 14, 15. They're not the kind of thing I should take particularly seriously, but it's just... I don't know. If you can't tell, you end up assuming the worst, you know. Or at least it's easy to, even though you shouldn't. It's unique, rare books. How do you find it one when or even in all of the way? Collect your literature, ship it to with a friend. And then he should go back outside. It's just... And there's nothing wrong with being pragmatic, it's just... You, even, you can say, you know, Mahoyo did not do this. You know, did not make... Oh, Hytham and Kaveh pretty much canon to make a political statement. Did not make Korn and Navia pretty much canon for the sake of a political statement. But that doesn't mean you still can't like and be happy about the fact that they made those pairings. You just need to, you know, it's good to be honest with yourself and understand, you know, why they did those things. Is to, you know, engage logically and healthily, I would say. Okay, so what does he have to say over here? Experiences and climbers, design is exquisite, and... He's always talking about writing. Oh, oh! Not like head is in head can. It's... 
pet shipping. I'm sure you can. Fi I I'm sure you can figure out what that stands for. But yeah, yeah. Interesting. Oh no, I went to the wrong place. Go over here and yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think now you understand what I was trying to say. But yeah, I mean Fontaine is the Yuri Nation. Samara was the Yaoi Nation. Okay, I wonder what Naon will be. But on cue, wondering whether you might appear. Do you like it here? Sisal yeah, yeah, it's just... It's it's ultimately a difference in taste. You know, they're appealing to various kinds of different audiences, and this is... That's how that works. I'd fail to inspire... I, I think a big thing to me, though, is that... A lot of the Traveler stuff... It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Especially, and I think they've gotten a bit better about it in the sense that they've been making the Traveler a lot more of their own character and giving them actual spoken dialogue. But, legitimately, if you're talking about it from the, from the perspective of projecting, self-inserting onto a character, frankly, the Traveler is... probably one of the hardest characters to self-project onto. Because, one, they're literally an immortal alien god. The only difference is that, you know... They're explicitly from another world, but even then, they're still from space, not from Earth. The only character who might be from Earth would be, I don't know, Atlas, for now. But, you know, and also just the fact that, you know, as... Blonde is a very rare hair color, and... You know, as an Asian person myself, partially Asian person, you know... You know, and the game, I would presume, has a disproportionately Asian audience for a game. Not just, you know, in China and Japan, but also in America. You know, there aren't going to be a lot of blonde Asians, hair, color, hair dye or no. It's just, if you were asking me, you know, what character do you most relate to in this game, it's not going to be Traveler. It's probably going to be Scaramouche. <laughs> I do find it very funny that, you know, a lot of people are all... And I mean this entirely in a neutral way, almost... And frankly, maybe even his praise. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is It was done to try to make them a self-projectable player insert character. The issue is, is that... In appearance and backstory, demeanor... You know, nature, physically, I find them very hard to project onto. And frankly, the biggest thing is just... The name you give them is not even their actual name. The name you give to Scaramouche is more of an actual name than you give to the Traveler. Once you name Wander whatever you name him, that is, for all intents and purposes, his name. But Ether is still Ether when people know. Lumine is still Lumine when people know. But like I was saying, back, you know, right when the game started, basically, when Unreconciled Stars came out, you know, the Scaramona pairing became pretty popular, and a lot of people were, oh, it's a joke ship, because they have big hats, but it... You know, frankly, to me, it's pretty much, it's like Zhang Tao, it's like Pantalon and Yelon. A lot of it is just, before Mona was confirmed to be from Mondstadt in Dortmund Port, you know, there was a case to be made that, you know, she was one of the most, you know, actual Asian looking characters, you know, black hair. And then probably later, you know, like with Yelon, with Hu Tao, probably, you know, if you're... I don't know, an Asian guy who likes one of the characters in the game, or an Asian woman who likes one of the characters in the game, you know, those specific characters. Those are probably some of the most easy pairings to sort of insert yourself into. Because, quite frankly, they look the most like actual Asian people. There was, this was some years ago, but I saw, it was pretty cute, there was some gamer couple who basically always put co-op where the guy would be Zhongli and the gal would be Hu Tao. And they and he proposed to her in their teapot. A little silly, but you know, if they make it work, they make it work. Fail to inspire, pursuing my own senses, couldn't be happier, not to mention, yes. You might lose your hour on end without interruption for a getaway. Finding injustice to keep you up. Martial arts. Oh, he doesn't want to get confronted. Collecting any of that. I'll see you talking about it. Give me another earful. Yeah, Xing Chao's new outfit from Lantern Right mentions a bit about Xing Chao's brother. Oh, I agree. It's incredibly cute. When I say when I say that people choose pairings that they can project themselves onto, I don't mean that in a negative sense at all. 
I just mean this is what people do. Frankly, it's closer to me than, you know, being very, very into other kinds of pairings. It's just... It's a matter of personal preference. Might appear... Like it here and... Let me see. Senses couldn't be happier, not to mention, yes. More shorts practice. Okay, so that's the same as before, but... Xing Zhao's outfit... Xing Zhao's outfit mentions Xing Zhao's brother, like I said, which... They could add him eventually, but... So many other characters they could add as well. You know, from the very first... Very first patch... Well, initial release, they mentioned that Roron character on... The boat over in Liwei Harbor, but it was still entirely a mentioned character. I thought that might have ended up being Galon, but I don't think it was. And we still have no idea who this Roran person is. Let me see. Yeah, Master of the Pearl Galley. Samornit Wilshas. It suggests that the traveler may have met him unyieldingly already. And we still have no idea what's going on with him. Interesting. Okay. I... It's hard to say. I think it would be easier to say the ones that I don't like. I think all of them except for Ningguang's and Barbara's are equally good in their own way. Because... The blue simply just does not really match Ningguang well in my opinion. And it really plays in the whole thing where they just make everything blue way too much. And Barbara's just looks silly. You know, jeans works well as casual clothing. But Barbara's is... <sighs> it's one of the few outfits that I cannot and will not just have characters wear just in general as casual clothing that I prefer. Or just to show it off. But every other that I have, I just keep on the character at all times. To the point that I've actually totally forgotten that Kaching has her base outfit. <laughs> I've had the new outfit on her for literal years. Up to chat, of course, always a pleasure to talk. What have you been doing recently? Escorting cargo. Classic dangerous hall. Then, pure chivalry. Sort of here. Just the other way, and hands are tied. He's not wearing handcuffs, is he? What about yours? I would, in terms of five-star outfits, I would say, I like Diluc's, but I still do think that Cutchings is probably the best in terms of just looking good, being different, and being, being flashy enough to be interesting, but not flashy enough that really has to be a pure special occasion outfit if you catch my drift. As Deluxe is cool, and I like what it arguably implies about his Fatui connections, a lot of people do say that it has sort of a Fatui vibe to it. Also, the fact that it gives a bit of a black tinge to his Pyrotax, which I do appreciate. And there are some people who think it's basically the closest we'll ever get to a Delusion Deluxe, which sadly might be true. Besides you, World Contest, 100 Shores, Axe Wings. Description and the actual beneficiary, need a tally, verified by the other, pretty confident. <laughs> Don't mind me, don't expect to win too easily. What do you think about the outfits yourself? But... I like... I like Kai's too. It's very, very cool. The big thing is, is that I have gotten Kai's C6. Did buy stuff from the shop, but... It... It looks like an outfit from a play. Which it is, and it's supposed to, but makes it harder to just have it on him while running around, though I do keep it on him. It's, I think a lot of it is also just, Kaya's base four-star outfit is just, it, combi it combines class and sleaze to such a perfect aspect, to such a perfect degree, that I don't even think it was possible to top. I think part of the reason they give him a sort of theater outfit is that, there's really nothing that could represent Kai as a character better than the outfit he already had. Talk, doing recently, Monster Twice, Three Dead, just pure chivalry. Single, beat the dust game, not quite the Kill dust game. Have you joined me? Pity, have to wait here and now. Got it, and same as before. Okay. Okay. Sagi, Justice. 
正義の味方アライオブジャスティスアレンツクルーワニマチョア What I'd like to do, Tom, get your critique on the short story. Right, right. What I do find funny is that in his first story quest, they joke, he jokes about inheriting his eye patch from his family and therefore being a pirate. And the pirate thing is an obvious lie. But the funniest part is, is that were you here for the Chasing Shadows event, the Dewitt Combat event? Did you see any of the hidden letters around Mondstadt or look at the dialogue elsewhere? Because it does make it clear that even though they're, you know, they're comrades, they're not pirates, the eye patch is inherited, which is really, really funny. Okay, okay. Well, the event was fun, but it wasn't anything all that special. The story was the important part. Not us, Sharper, rubbing up on you, Henry is improved. Right, he did a bad man, right? Not he that departs. Who's your own pace? Heart into this, keep it always, and you get all snappy. See, we'll be even better. You know, it would take a lot of effort, but I honestly wish that every single, that every companion could give you some sort of special item, but would have been a bit much. Time, that is secret, then this is now, part of the story, improved a lot, same as before. Give me always, and get all snappy, will be even better. So we have to say in the morning. Morning. Ohio. Justice, please fetch me. Switch to night. Hmm. But like I said, it gave us a lot of Conria crumbs, in particular naming King Irmain, or that is Odin. Good night. Always to me. Come past his encounter and share them with you later. Alright, so we've already gotten all this stuff. But a story about his handwriting and his chivalry. Big thing is, there are only three actual sets on the ground for here, so. Right, and this is. Hmm. It's Razor and Mika in here, but. And Mona, Tartaglia, Zhao, Zhongling, Yao Yao, Baizhu. Tartaglia, Zhao, Yao Yao. I do find it interesting that Tartaglia is, for all intents and purposes, kind of a leeway character. Not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just interesting. Tartaglia. Shell. Oh, oh, furniture placement limit. Hello, thank you. Hmm, hmm. That's why, that's probably part of why I started from outside then. It is. I do appreciate it, but I honestly feel as if... And one big thing about it is that what they can change in a 5-star outfit in Genshin is decently circumscribed by a number of aspects of game design, in particular frame data, hitboxes, animations, that they could never vary the way that Duke swings his sword. When he you due to a skin, that would be maybe not a balance issue, but it would cause inconsistencies. But so there are a lot fewer sets, a lot more characters use the same sets as compared to Monstat. So what has a lower adeptal energy than the other one do? I'm going catching Yanfei Zhangwei Shenha Yunjin. So it does make it kind of tough to remember. Then actually, let me see. Catching, catching, catching. Ningguang. Catching. And let's put them all here. Yanfei. Zhongli. Zhongli, Yunjin, and Shenha. Shenha should be over here. And where's Zhongli? Let's see. Hmm. Be right around. No, but where is he? Why is he? The selection over here, the ordering is really, really weird and off. Okay. Yeah. But like I said, they could never change the hitboxes or the speed or anything really sizable about even the way he swings his sword. They can add additional particle effects to change the color, maybe, but that's the limit. Which is why I really think that 
they should give us actual character alts with at least the Celestian Conrad chapters. At the very least, we do need Foul Legacy Tortagle, or at least Illusion Tortagle. Yeah, probably to have Foul Legacy as Burst or something. And who is here right now? Oh, Yuenjin's actually the other way. I, in terms of character, I just look. It's probably. Mm. I liked Sethos a lot in the Sano Story Quest 2. Beto's cool. And I'll probably like her even more if the, after I get around to her hangout. I like Shinobu's whole gimmick of, as well as being total jack of all trades and basically having a Wrangle Ito. But. In terms of character, it's probably Kaya, Kave, or Dori. Samira really is where the writing started getting really, really good. I think we haven't seen enough of Shavros. But what I liked, what I saw in the Fontaine Gun slash movie event, I really did enjoy. Just because... And, you know, I was in kind of a fragile emotional state because I still have my parasites. But, yeah, it's funny when you can say that. But she... Wait, what's up with her, with her artifacts? Does she... Oh, right, she's, she's using, she is using Dionas, which don't really have any kind of crit rate as opposed to stuff I've got on Diona and I'm leveling for her, and then we'll trade back. So this stuff actually has a decent crit rate. Oh! I guess you didn't hear it. When I was in Europe for a choir tour last summer, we were in Siena, and there were some water fountains here, water fountains there, and we were in Rome right before that, and they have a lot of public spigots that are very clean and very safe. So when we passed through Siena, I drank some of the water and got very, very sick. So we assumed it would be safe, and well, it wasn't Rome, so it wasn't. And I think the other guys didn't get parasites, or at least they didn't get as sick as me. I drank more of the water, which probably would have been part of it. But also, I... I also ate some salmon, a really good salmon steak a bit before. And it is very possible for fish to carry parasites. They end up being roundworms. So for a while, I was just constantly very tired, very... Very hungry, too. That was also a big problem. But as I was saying, and Yunjin likes this one... Does Yujin like this one too, or am I? Wait, wait. No, no, the borders between these sets is just too small. I am better than okay now, thank you for asking. And they're all gone. And now I have a funny story to tell. But as I was saying, just... The plotline of the Fontaine shooting gallery slash movie making event was... Thank you, thank you, about Cycle's revenge and basically Chavros trying to stop a cycle of revenge in the end. And I liked that. That was fun. And it did end up basically being the closest we'd get to a Shavro story quest. But that is still basically all we know about her character, other than, oh, she likes junk food and shoots. But what we do see is good. I think if she keeps showing up, she could get a lot more interesting dimensions to her character. I really like how they had Shenha eventually start working as a waitress and accidentally beat people up by being too strong. It was funny and also just a good development to her character. In that same vein, I like how that whenever Layla shows up, she often mentions the animo fungus from that one event. Yeah, one day, one day, they, got, they gotta give us some pets. They gotta give us actual fungus pets. Well, destroy on that mark out performance. It's back in Wii, feels just like being there. For tonight? Okay, cool. It's a bit forward. The diligence and where are you going? Where is she now? So is... None of them are in there yet. So presumably she went inside the house. The Wii ones seem to have a pretty even split between... As in, every character I've seen so far seems to like an indoor set and an outdoor set, which complicates things. So you have to jump around a bit. Hello, Yunjin. 
Feyun's study room. You and like my own name, connection, Sir Cloud. They really were. I I had to rush that event past midnight on the very last day it was available. A couple years ago because I was busy with school. My senior year of college, but I I did enjoy it. I mean, it was rushed. And I do like that Hania has shown back up a couple of times. I do feel she doesn't have a specific enough model to become playable at the moment. Though to be fair, Rana got a vision too. I feel like making characters like Rana and Hania playable, Jet 2 could be a Enjo maybe. He was in the White Day art. Be, could also be a good way to kind of pad out the character release roster when Kangri and Celestia come around. Besides just characters actually from there and maybe alts. <laughs> Of course, to my white king, some plus hope for, truly grateful. Jodan, this, a joke. Especially because... Even though it wasn't really... It wasn't any kind of moving character with its own AI. I do like how Sucro summons partially an animo hypostasis. As her burst. In its butterfly form. And I do also appreciate... How Furina does a similar kind of thing with her summoned animals, and makes me think that, it, you know, if they ever put out Hani as a character, they could give her a s summoning... Oh, nice! I... I like Victor, too. I think that they would require a lot of character model changes to make a lot of the Vitui streamers just playable. But Victor does use, you know, the NPC version of the tall male model. It's just... It's very interesting because... A lot of the reasons the NPCs are so interesting is because they are NPCs with actual quest lines beyond being playable. But there are a lot of NPCs who I feel like should become playable. The one in... The one in Mondstadt or the one in Sumeru? Because I've already had him move over to Sumeru over here with you know, equivalent exchange again. I know that he has the Return to Days of Winter one that they added some time ago that sends him away from Mondstadt and then to- Yeah, yeah. After you do Return to Days of Winter, eventually there is a commission that makes him show up in Sumeru. It- I don't think it has any additional chance of showing up because I don't think there's, there's a connected achievement. But he is over on this way, between the cafe and the souvenir shop. I could show you. <laughs> it's right here. Yeah, he shows back up again. Yeah, I wonder... They should bring Enjo back. They put him in the White Day art. There's no way he, there's no way he doesn't come back again. Mm -hmm. he, he, has, he has girl dad energy. Trouble myself in the next year. Way to get by and... Get used to it. Session here. Complaining won't do me any good. How so? How Zevolod Zevolod stays so enthusiastic about his work. His commander. Back to Mondstadt, of course not. And dirty looks all the time. How that kid is doing. Bring her a letter for you. Fine, really? Shouldn't be sending letters. What did you just drop? Then, see you later. I feel that when they make Capitano playable. Victor should be part of this quest somehow. Well, now you know. All you have to do is either look for him or do the quest that makes him show up. But as I was saying... Back in Mondstadt, if you recall, he mentions wanting to serve under Capitano. Which, there's enough of a connection there that I feel like... They should bring him back up again with that opportunity. Shigagoro, around now. Zizes, an opera or pot of tea, beneficial to body and soul. Back with you. Go on, Chino, don't worry. Good order, delightful scenery, no issue residing in such a pleasant place. Here's my voice. Reversing out. It is true of anyone, not a problem at all, every day. Part of a routine. The day only you will know, three days everyone will know. Have to practice, stay a master. Sassing, but she enjoys it. The opera, every subtlety in the story. Hmm, my hours of practice. Kind of understanding. 
Yeah, I think the big thing about... I guess the big question is, if Kabutano does have an element, and he probably will, the question is what he'd be. I know a lot of people say Geo, because it would probably be one of the simplest to do to make him sort of a pure sort of gorilla-type character, but... Hey, singing and Mayasa, every morning. Ah, appreciate your courtesy, however. Whoever's just singing or reciting, mournful and hysterical. Could be scary. Complete for the opera instead, understand. And understanding. Right of the way. Then, have a chat and. Perfect. Many things, modest and formal. I. Oh. I think. Probably Jet. I would probably like Enjo just as much if he got as many appearances as she did. But... They tried to do kind of a dry run with Rana, but she was indisposed for so much of Aranyaka that it didn't mean much. But... You know, Jet gets two whole world quest lines to herself, more or less. And... I would say that it depends on whether you count the... For her foe's rage, like Great Waters, the final wrap-up where you actually kill Babel and literally massacre the entire Tanit tribe, which is still one of the craziest things that's happened in the entire game. Oh yeah, you and Jet wipe out an entire Aramite tribe. It's actually kind of crazy, especially since we even kill a crocodile guy. But, and then she gets mentioned again, Girl of the Sand, with some notes, but it's just, there's no way that Jet won't show up again. There's probably no way that Enjo won't show up again. It's just the fact that they were the two NPCs to get respectively Valentine's Day and White Day art. It's even if they don't become playable, and I still think there's a decent enough chance for Jet. And maybe even Enjo. I think <sighs> Jet already is different from the standard Clearwater model in a number of ways. And Though they definitely changed something about her if they made her playable, probably change her hairstyle and take the blindfold off. But with Enjo, his human form is generic entirely. But that's also not his standard form. If they wanted to make him playable, they could give him another more representative, quote unquote, standard sized humanoid form, and that would be fine. Because what we see him as is a quote unquote human is not his normal form anyway. Modest, experience to draw upon, respect you gain from your experience. Taking up to travel, busy in the troop, never had the right opportunity. Show some customs, sword play the monster knights, and we artists. Cut through nearly anything, struck swords, with only blade for and jade seal, was like the wind, many of combat, and we gene. Nothing, how to say it at all. A chat. A bit more. A position for your time, appropriate gift. It's just... <sighs> they have like, many gifts of Prima Gems, but I, all, I almost feel as if some unique quest item per character would be more interesting. Yes, the name card is kind of close. So formal. Do your travels. Won't beat around the bush. Giving up and traveling and... So that's Ne, Mata, Inazuma, Tanzo, Tanzo Kan, the swords of Inazuma, and the Jade Seal, Material, Zairyo, component because hmm. so the Ashokuzai for ingredient use when we're talking of razor I think use Zairyo here for material but I've also heard Zairyo used as a word for ingredient in cooking character story I quite frankly I would say that Dia's story quest was my favorite it's it's very, it's honestly kind of crazy how much screen time, attention, and love Dia got during the actual Archon quest and the Fall quest. And then her kit was just almost unusable garbage. Though I do still try to use her with Eleni, and she does somewhat okay. But craftsmanship. But the ending of Dia's. Dia's story quest brought me to tears multiple times. It was simple, but. The twist hit me hard. I think they used it a bit too often after that and took away a lot of the blow. But that was the first time where it was sort of, you know, the reveal of the storyline is that someone who people thought was evil was actually good all along. And that hit me really hard the first time that happened. 
they did something kind of similar with Baiju, where all his sus behavior, trying to basically experiment on Chi Chi, was revealed as basically, you know, trying to save Changsheng and everybody in the world from death. Or at least Changsheng and himself. You know, become immortal so Changsheng could drain his vitality forever without him dying or her dying. But, and that did, you know, ring a bit out of me as well, but Diaz was the first time, and of course, you know, it's always the most effective the first time. More questions, and yeah. Anything you like to do? One thing I've been meaning to do. Teptai, Jane, Coast, Adept's Abode. Yeah. You might have talked about it before, but it was very clear but that she probably was made with an earlier variation of Fiorina's kit in mind. What light ride lightning in the sky to ascend? Light, ride light. Sin, mm -hmm. to and fro, no, not the world below. Heard the story, yet ever get to see it twice one day. Opera there, echoing through, Chingu the Peak. Interesting. What to prepare? Think it over. It's kind of you. Interesting. So don't you endure the Adjian? Great input, a deal. Sing, Yakusoka Day's promise. Perfect. The big thing about it is... A different Furina kit that would work with Dio would probably be... Basically just March say on steroids. In that it's any kind of percent HP change at all instead of just percentile. Because Dia actually kind of has, has anti-synergy with Furina in the sense that if you have her on field taking damage, the percentage damage from any hit is going to be reduced. Which means that Furina's buff will not go as strongly. Sadly. But... In the end, they had to make Furina's kit the way it is now. To buff healers retroactively like they did. And I do think that making Baiju and Jean... And to a lesser extent, Barbara actually good and usable. It was better for the meta than just a kit that would have maybe made Dia specifically good. Oh, thank you! You smell Furina. Oh, we're, yeah, we're talking about Furina's... We were talking a bit about Furina's kit. I was talking about how Dia's kit was probably... Nice to meet you, Ichiro Akatsuki. First Sun Crimson Moon, VT. How you doing? Just popping in to say hi? Good, nice. Oh, and the Gaming profile pic. I like it. Been a while since I ran him, but he worked really well. Shanyun. Zoo, fair, fair. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you look at Gaming and say, literally me? Do you like doing lion dances and arguing with your father? But, as I was saying, Furina, Furina. We are talking about the idea that Fremenet is fun too. I've actually, I used Fremenet a lot to, I was farming the Swanee in advance for Sethos, because he uses Swanee materials to ascend. But I, when I was farming Swanee materials for Shanyu in a couple patches ago, I used a Rathesley reverse melt team with Rathesley, of course, Shenha, Bennett, and Zhongling. And peak, peak, peak. I did that a few times. I should. Oh, but he's in. He should be in a Marginarian Theaters versus lineup. And so would Jonyun because of Anna. Well, I'm talking about weeks, but. I should be able to use Gaming and Jonyun together again. That would be peak. But as I was saying, as I was saying, he's just. The fact that he can use my R5 Serpent Spine is part of what makes him so good. It's just. R5 Serpent Spine is such a silly weapon. The fact that it's better than most signature claimers at R1 is just so funny. But as I was saying, when I was farming for Sethos, I tried out and switched to a Shinobu, Nihito, Xingqiao, Fremene, Hyper Bloom, Fridge ish team, and that worked better against the Swanee. And that just made me sad. Fremene or Gaming? Both, maybe? So the abode. And then. Thank you for the follow, by the way. Always happy to meet new people. Shinku Peak, no really. Sincere, no opera, and once you've made up your mind. Fair, fair. Oh! Well, I hope in that case, you don't have a problem with me. If I were intimidated in you, I would have to change my approach. Anything else? Right now, I'm just going through a little bit of the teapot. 
Should I sleep there? Good, good, good. Okay, thanks. It's just... I guess it would be maybe a question of intensity, maybe. In the sense that... You know, there's some people who talk, talk a lot and are relaxed, which is people who talk a lot and are, in, and are intense. Oh, okay, okay. If it's not too private, where is that? A distant wind. Rain or storms go about your way, and... Let me see. And wait, I can't... Can I not change the time right now? Wait, what? Fair, fair. I mean, I, I may be a yapper, but I like to hope I'm not too intimidating. Okay, but I was able to change the time in the Mondstadt teapot, so it raises the question of what's going on here. I maybe I have to do it from inside? Let me check. As in go in the house to change it, because that was a lot of... But no, I was able to change it outside last time. This is really, really weird. Well, what I should probably do is... Not gonna be... We away in fun. Oh, wow. I wonder wh Well, on one hand, I wonder why. On the other hand, I'm glad that you know that and were able to tell me. That was very, that was very useful information. Thank you. Yeah, okay, it works inside, but not outside, and... Yeah, because that was outside in the Mondstadt one. Well, as in both the Wee Wee ones, because there's the mountain and then there are the floating islands. That's been a bit different. So you should be able to... Wait, wait, wait. Busy... Oh, no, I... I want background of morning again. Okay. I'm an imbecile. I'm stupid, stupid. Okay. That means I gotta go inside to... Switch that around, but I think I'll go through all the dialogue for that one furnished set and the best thing you could do today, which is giving somebody helpful and useful information, or? Well, if so, I'm glad I could be part of your edifying experience. Uh, also, no pressure, but if you're interested in seeing more of me, and I will be doing more things this week and next week. Next weekend, the Elden Ring DLC comes out, which... I won't be doing the DLC immediately, but I probably will be starting my- Oh! Oh! Oh, wow. Proud of you, proud of you. So as in, they said yes? That's great. I'm glad for you. That's really cute. So did it go- Oh! Nice! Nice! There you go. There you go. So... Things are looking up for you? That's good. Welcome back. I'll be off very shortly, but I'm doing a bit more dialogue here in the teapot, and... Wait, it's still morning? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well... Happy Pride? H happy Happy Gay Month? I guess? Yeah, good luck. I'm proud of you. I may have only known you for five to ten minutes, but... I'm proud of you. Okay, so let's actually go tonight. Okay. One, one could even say a, one could even say a gay gay month. Yeah, good luck. I... Uh, embarrassment is a state of mind. Most people will take cues on how to react to what you do and say based on your own reaction to what you yourself do and say. Even if you trip and fall or drop something, if you can play it off as something funny and something you're not ashamed of, most people won't think it's embarrassing either. Oh, that's cute. Customized... What is a Tony? Exactly. It's a kind of cheese often eaten in Italy. We have Italians in chat. You may want to take notice of that. But wait, oh, you... Wait, what? Oh, they're... Right, this place is permanently mourning. I didn't even think about that. That's what's going on. Never mind. Okay. I can't believe it took me that long to figure that out. I'm an imbecile. I'm a complete and utter imbecile. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Well. Well, in that case, you might be happy to hear that, for better or worse, I should have a model upgrade relatively soon. And can I just move Yunjin into here? That, that was interesting to know. And we can't just take her out that way. A chocolate maker. Dark chocolate with raspberry 
Pop Rocks, and Sea Salt. So how dark, how dark is that dark chocolate then? I may be... May have to exact a heavy burden on you. Well, you, you would hope that your chocolate maker was against... Okay, okay. Fair. But a model upgrade is in the works, so you may have that to look forward to. So we need to take Yunjin in here. That's fair. Not not everyone is ridiculous like me. Take this. It's subjective. It... There was... You know, I like to think that it isn't accurate for me. There was a study some years ago that said that... Some time ago that said that people who like very dark chocolate are more likely to have psychopathic tendencies. I don't know how I feel about that. Heavier is in heavier... Heavier chocolate, or...? And with people that still only that need to, seems like a safe place. Climatized to the mortal world. Maybe we could be both, you know? You have pretty much copped to being sadistic in terms of... You know, whenever I die in Dark Souls, that makes you pretty happy, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that's the same for me. I think I told you about that time where... Cheesecake just totally knocked me out. Hello, Shinha. Shinkaku, constant climber of the city. So now I can be myself, no distractions. You know, that, this is how I know that I've hit it big. There's an actual argument in chat. I should... I need to get a pull plug in for this kind of thing. I... I like the sweetness of fruit. But... I think, and this is just my personal perspective, but, it's just my personal perspective, but I think that, personally, just for myself, not eating a lot of processed sugar is, is what makes fruit taste a bit sweeter to me, and that, I'm gonna show my oat muffins again, I'm gonna show my oat muffins again, which is that, Generally, at the start of the week on Sunday, on Sunday evenings, I cook these basically oat muffins with oatmeal, some fruits, usually chopped up apples, nuts, cinnamon, nutmeg, seasonings, and... They're... You've never had them. What do I need? Do I need to start selling merch? Start drawing the muffins out? And I like sour sweets too, but like I said, I would say for me it's more like sour fruits and that... S then the word sweet, the sword. Oh, right, I did. Oh, you actually made them? Oh, that's great. Glad to hear you liked them. Well, you can thank sallysbakingaddiction.com for that, but... I... And this might frighten some of you, but I really like eating grapefruits. I'm sorry, I forgot. I'm sorry, I forgot. I'm sorry. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Okay. Yeah, when when you send your care package from Italy, you know, when you send a fan mail, don't 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 poison me or anything. Yeah, just pure grapefruits. I'm glad you appreciate grapefruit. Grapefruit is good. I've had people come here and talk about hot cocoa before. Feels too too. Use your freedom and relative privacy. I know you're joking. So am I. It's, we're, we're both doing it for the bit. We all know. Okay. So we can. Go over here and go out the remaining. Yeah, I'll be hopping off in a few minutes because I need to take my mom to mention this board got to take her to the hospital. It's really good for you too. I think the balance in bitter and sweet is good. What I will say is, oh no, your palace is, oh my goodness. You meant to say place, right? Palace is funny though. Is that if you want, you can, oh wow. What I should do, frankly, is talk to all of them, and I should just collect these rewards, talk a bit more, and then do their dialogue later, and should move them inside first so I can actually make it nighttime first. Oh, yeah, because I feed... The big thing for me is that I eat grapefruits like I'd eat an orange, and talked about mulberry. That's good, that's good. And... You know, I do like how Yanfei 
It's very different from her English voice, how deep her Japanese voice is. Definitely gives a lot of her lines a different feel. Sweet, super sour, sweet. I, okay, okay. Big thing is, is that, you know, a lot of people cut grapefruits in half and eat them with a spoon, but I always eat them. Their skins are thick, but you can still peel them off. But you peel the skin and you just eat them like orange slices. I do. I eat them that way. Is he your roommate or an older brother or something? I swear. Festival season, great deal of time. This, more shops, and legal support. What do we even sell here? Probably. But I would say that beyond even grapefruit, I really like Pamela. Oh, is in actually a blood-related brother or just in a theoretical sense. Let's go over here and the classic Baijukov. The classic Baijukov. Oh, okay, okay, makes sense, makes sense. Wait, wait, so what, what kind of grapefruits are you talking about then? This is the Feiyun study. No, this is just a bad room. Quite suitable. Their prices at fair market rates. Don't expect to unexpectedly overpay for anything. Agate fragment. Grapefruits are basically... Okay, okay. Grapefruit is... I believe a... I've never had a dragon fruit. I had dragon fruit ice cream once. But it was right after I got my wisdom teeth out, so I could hardly open my mouth, and I could hardly even taste it. But... Yeah, you're two... You're, you're two gay moms. Okay. Mm -mm. But... Oh, oh! Okay. I'm gonna... I'm gonna info dump. I'm gonna info dump. You'll have to forgive me for this. But... The primordial citrus. There are a number of primordial citrus fruits, but the relevant ones here are the tangerine. No, I think I think it's the mandarin. It's either the tangerine or the mandarin, but it's one of those little oranges. And then one of them is also the pamela, which is a big, very sour fruit. The pamela is big and sour. The tangerine and the Mandarin or small and sweet, and it's either the tangerine or the mandarin. By the way, it's... I can just look this up. The sweet orange. Yeah, I gotta drop my mom in a second. Okay, right. The the sweet orange, the orange we're most people are familiar with, is 50% pomelo and 50% mandarin. And then the grapefruit is another cross after that between the pomelo and the sweet orange. So a sweet orange is 50% mandarin, 50% pomelo. I haven't had pickled lemons, but I've had. Oh my goodness. Not 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 the fruity joke. But as I was saying, oh my goodness. But as I was saying, so a grapefruit is 75% pomelo and 25% mandarin. And it's really, really good. But I do appreciate pomelos significantly. Clap, clap, clap. Finally, another jester. Okay, let's get down to business to defeat the Hans. I'm dying. I'm dying here. To discuss and oh no, Kutching is here right now. That's right. All about them. Oh my goodness. Not the Riz. Not the Riz. Streets of Weiwei. Stores and vendors most detailed. The Pro of Chihu Rock. Shop place with Ying Er, Zhang Ling, and yeah. Mm-hmm. The first step to rizzing up someone else is to riz up yourself. That's what I think. Okay. And then, I believe in you. Even if you don't believe in yourself, I believe in you. So, let's go over here and... Come on, come on, come on. There is... He's talking about Chihu Rock and then to go through all the other dots will take another time. Hello. The document wants work, everything except for a clock to gauge time with. See if it missed something important. Always busy, always working. What? What 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 do you what what does that even what does that even mean? I huh? What? Uh, 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 uh. I'm I'm gonna Yeah that yeah that, that, that's that's probably a bit much. 
And where is... Who is over here? Because we got Touching all there and... Lots to share, but she is... It was... It, it was a bit of a crass joke. You, you can do it. Streets with a few shops like this one, many pursuits, and a boldness of spirit. Valuable as gold. Oh, thanks, Zhongli. Yeah, just say what Zhongli just said. Say that all your days with them were as valuable as gold. Hit them with the Zhongli pickup line. I'm sure that'll work. Okay. Something is Zhao X2 inside. Maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. If they like Zhongli, it might work. If they recognize it, that might be good. It also might be really bad. Okay. So, over here it is. Multitude of rules and rigid furniture, so that'd be feng shui. It's not non there is a specialization, but in every taboo, connection during our journey together. How cute. Okay. Oh, goodness. Yeah, yeah, I, I would say so. It depends on the person, but I would say that it's probably a bit. Even that might be a bit too forward. Again, it really does depend on the person. Just... Fair, fair, fair. I'm definitely an error on the side of ca caution kind of person. That was etched in my memory. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Just feeling Discord. From Discord? By the way, there is a fan Discord where I post schedules. It's down below the screen, so feel free to check in if you have any interest. Most of you are already there. Quite a rare find indeed. Yeah, yeah, just scroll down a little. It's a link to the Eigen Cord. Does he surprise me? Interesting. The Eigen Cord. Okay, so there should be something else inside, presumably, and... See that Yanfei line, but... I think... You can still help by saying things not to do. I don't think... That can still be useful in its own way. If you say you're no good. All you have to do is have faith in yourself. Fun study, quite rare material catalogs, and competitive market advantage. These are simple, more presentable articles of furniture. Alright. Hmm. Interesting. So in that case, I'm gonna... Mm -hmm. It's okay. I think, I think Twitch just discriminated against you for being Italian. And on that note, I need to hop out and get ready to drive my mom to the hospital and probably eat some ramen with her afterwards. So thank you for everyone who showed up. Thank you for the new follower. Like I said, new model upgrade hopefully soon. At the very least Elden Ring soon. We have all that to look forward to, so great as always and see you all soon. I'll do my best. Sayonara again.